Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Berkeley County Board of Education meeting this Tuesday, June 28, 2022. I call the meeting to order. I declare a quorum of members are present. The media has been notified. Do we have a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. We have a second. Second. I, you can take her motion and I'll second. Kathy Littleton. I didn't hear Ms. Littleton. I apologize. We have a motion from Ms. Littleton and a second from Ms. Tanner to approve the agenda. Is there any discussion? All in favor of approving the agenda, please respond by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, nay? Nay. nay. Okay, the ayes have it by a vote of 5-2. The agenda is approved. Do we have a motion to approve the minutes of the June 14th, 2022 board meeting? So moved. Second. We have a motion from Ms. Tanner, a second from Ms. Wofford to approve the minutes of the June 14 board meeting. Is there any discussion? All in favor of the motion to approve the minutes, please respond by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, nay? Motion carries by a vote of 8-0. We need a motion to enter into executive session. So, second. I have a motion from Mr. Ramsey, a second from Ms. Tanner to enter into executive session. The purposes of executive session are as follows under section 2b a discussion of the evaluation employment appointment assignment demotion discipline or release of an employee as needed c a legal update regarding a pending threatened or potential claim or other matters covered by attorney client privilege d a discussion of negotiations incident to propose contractual arrangements and existing contractual arrangements. E, three student attendance appeals and one out of district attendance appeal. Is there any discussion? All in favor of entering into executive session, please respond by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, nay? The ayes have it by a vote of 8-0. We are in executive session. Hopefully, we will return promptly at 630. I need a recommendation to uh, return to regular session. So moved. Second. We have a motion from Ms. Tanner, second from Ms. Wofford to return to regular session. Is there any discussion? All in favor of returning to regular session, please respond by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, nay. The motion carries 8-0. We are in regular session. And for the record, uh, no action was taken in executive session. Item number three is the Pledge of Allegiance and the moment of silence. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance and remain standing for a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic which stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Please be seated. It's my pleasure to have uh, some more legacy builders tonight. Ms. Uh, Katie Tanner, our public relations officer, uh, will turn the program over to you. Good evening, Chair Barrow, Superintendent Jackson, members of the board, and all of you who have gathered here tonight. I'm excited to introduce our legacy builders portion and to recognize our first legacy builder, I'm going to invite Ms. Trish Davis up to join me. Good evening, Chair Barrow, Superintendent Jackson, members of the board. 
I'd like to take a few minutes and share with you some information about a very special teacher. Ms. Holliday is a second grade teacher at Mount Holly Elementary. This past school year was her first year of teaching. Despite being a new teacher, she has earned the respect of her administration and her peers. She was nominated for the Berkeley County School District Rookie Teacher of the Year by her principal, Dr. Eddings, who stated, Ms. Holliday is a natural born teacher and has been an amazing addition to the Mount Holly family. She has created a warm, nurturing, trusting, and respectful culture within the classroom setting. Students are engaged in learning and excited to be present at school. Ms. Holliday displays a passion and excitement for learning as she continuously seeks out opportunities to grow as a professional. Her mentor shared that Ms. Holliday considers the needs of her students at all times and will advocate for their learning. She also noted that Ms. Ho Ms. Holliday has wisdom beyond her years and more experienced teachers have often adopted her strategies. In her Rookie Teacher of the Year application, Ms. Holliday stated, I desire for my students to know and feel that they are cared for, valued, and capable of doing amazing things, both academically and within the community. She explained that the most impactful insight I've had is to involve students in the process of setting, monitoring, and tracking their progress. I found that as I began to do that this year, the students became more invested in their academic achievements. She noted that despite all of the demands and challenges, she has been able to continue to focus and build upon relationships within my classroom and their families, find joy in the simple things, celebrate the wins, both big and small, and extend grace to my students families and myself. I am so grateful to be alongside my students in their educational journey. And Ms. Holliday, we are grateful that you are with us in Berkeley County School District. Please join me in congratulating Ms. Victoria Holliday as BCSD's 21-22 rookie teacher. I would also like to note that I know she has her family with her, um, and Dr. Eddings is here, but her mentor is here as well, and we so appreciate that support. I'd like some personal privilege here and ask the board to take a picture with Ms. Holliday and her family. Could you come up and let's do that, please? Board members? Mr. Jackson's invited as well. <laughs> Congratulations, Ms. Holiday. For our final recognition this evening, I spoke at the last meeting about our Summer of Champions um, and really trying to focus on representing our students and staff um, who have achieved, uh, especially in the spring uh, semester and going forward. So tonight we have some more champions among us. I would like to invite the Timberland High School mixed JROTC mixed Raider team to be recognized as state champions. Wow.
Good evening. Uh, I didn't know I was speaking tonight, so I'm going to pull this one out of my pocket. But uh, just first, I'd like to say I'm humbled by the opportunity to uh, coach these young men and women. Uh, we This is a team of nine. Uh, five were not able to show up tonight for various reasons, so I just want to recognize that up front. But so not everybody's here tonight, but uh, such an amazing team. Uh, next, I'd like to re recognize, because I always forget, not intentionally though are the parents that have supported these young men and women throughout our, our our Raiders season I really appreciate everything that you have done the community support the support that we've gotten from the school district as well I can't thank you enough for everything that you've done for our team for those who don't know uh, Raiders in Army Junior ROTC mirrors the concept of what Army Ra Rangers do so uh, we run a lot we do a lot of push-ups and sit-ups we we construct one rope bridges and cross rivers we pull trucks. We, we do it all at a Raider competition. Our competition starts early in the morning with a 3.1 mile run as a group and that's just the beginning. Uh, mm. We have an arduous competition that runs about anywhere from five to six hours where we compete head to head with uh, schools across South Carolina. And uh, Unlike any other sport, there's no distinction between 5A and 1A and 2A. So even though we're a 2A school, we're the state champions. Hey. So I'm not really sure what else to say, but uh, I really appreciate the opportunity all have given me to coach you. Uh, parents, I really appreciate, once again, the opportunity that you've given me to mentor uh, the young men and women that, uh, that are represented up here tonight, and I'm looking forward to so many great things in the future. So that's, that's about all I have to say, I guess. Go Wolves. Oh, wait, we're going to get a picture. Um, but before they go, uh, Sergeant Hodges is not completely bragging, but as the state champions, they went on to a multi-state regional competition and also represented the state of South Carolina there very, very well. So congratulations. Hold on. Hold on. Do you want to talk about that? I should have said something about that. I'm sorry. Uh, we, we went up to Virginia. Uh, thank you, school district, by the way, for uh, financing that for us. We really agree. <laughs> there was a lot of strings pulled right at the last minute for us, so we appreciate that. But uh, we competed against the best of the best within a seven-state region, our brigade for the Army footprint. We uh, have a seven-state region. And so the best of the best went up to Virginia to compete, and we came in third place oh, out wow. of all the teams in the seven-state region. <laughs> Phenomenal. Phenomenal job. I know that their principal and AP are also here. If y'all could join them up here for a photo. Mm. <laughs> and any board members or Mr. Jackson, if y'all would like to join them. Sure, let's, yes. let's do it. Absolutely. Congratulations to our Wolves, and that concludes our Legacy Builder portion for this evening. Thank you. We'll give them a brief moment for them to exit. Um, and we will uh, go on to uh, item number five, citizens comments. The first uh, speaker tonight is Latricia Pond on school teaching children things that should be taught, such as math, English, etc. Ms. Pond. Mr. Mayor, you didn't read the rules. Oh, okay. <laughs> 
as she's coming, I'll read the, the guidelines. In order to conduct the meeting in an orderly and efficient manner, we ask that you honor the following guidelines. Stakeholder comments are welcomed and encouraged. However, the board will not take immediate action on public comments at this meeting. Any person wishing to address the board must register prior to the meeting. Comments must re be regarding programs, policies, or procedures. Comments regarding complaints against employees other than district level executives or references to students other than the child of the speaker will not be heard in public session. Groups addressing the same topic should select one speaker. Comments will be limited to three minutes per speaker. The board chair reserves the right to allot additional time or to halt public comments that do not adhere to the guidelines. Welcome, Ms. Pond. Thank you. Uh, what, what I was talking about in there, um, I know a, a lot of schools are scratching um, certain words out of the dictionary like he and she. <laughs> and what I'm saying that the school should teach math and science and not um, t teach kids to, um, to lose uh, words out of the dictionary that exist. You know, if you're going to teach, teach math, English, and science, leave up to the parents um, what they should teach their kids about their gender or anything like that. That should be the parents' job, not the school's job. So I feel like, you, I don't just feel like, I know I have, I have two, I have children. Right now my daughter passed away, I have my two grandsons I'm raising, and I don't want nobody telling them that there's no such words as he and she in the dictionary. You know, tell, tell the kids the truth, let them learn for themselves and let them decide for themselves, but don't indoctrinate the children telling them that there's no such words. Thank you. Thank you for your comments, Ms. Pond. Our next speaker is Ms. Ingrid Centurion on restorative practices in the curriculum. Welcome, Ms. Centurion. Thank you. So I was here before and I asked a question if um, social emotional learning was going to be in the curriculum. And I believe you answered me back and you said no. And recently I've read uh, about restorative practices, if you don't know. Uh, my name is Ingrid Centurion, Lieutenant Colonel, US Army retired, combat pilot, served 22 years on active duty, and I understand something about discipline and training. And so I want to read to you here an article that is right on, and it said, recently reported that a majority of the Charleston County School Board members supports transitioning from the district's current discipline plan to restorative practices model. While their stated motive of equality is honorable, the change would drive more teachers out of the profession and diminish our children's ability to receive quality education. Restorative practices ask students to talk about their misbehavior in therapy circles with their teachers and counselors. The practice aims to reduce inequities by providing an alternative to traditional consequences like suspension, which tend to affect minorities at a higher rate than whites. I am a female minority, been um, minority my whole life as a woman in Army aviation, as a Latina, very small community here in Berkeley County. And so we need to understand when we are trying to discipline through a program called restorative practices, parents need to be concerned. Us parents are number one to discipline these children. And when they go to school, these teachers are there to educate them. They need to challenge these students in English, bas basics, and math. So teachers understand this concern, and they may have a special compassion for traditionally the underserved. But the evidence on restorative practices, however, suggests that it hurts minorities more than it helps. And recently, a study by the RAND Corporation from schools that shifted to restorative practices showed that student performance deteriorated after the change. Math scores for black students worsened. We are already very bad in math and English in South Carolina. We're ranked 44 in the country. So we need to focus on math and reading. And when it comes to discipline, you make sure that the parents are involved in the discipline process 
and we should not be looking at restorative practices. And so I would like to know, does Berkeley County have a future plan for restorative practices? We don't normally respond to public comments at the, at the time, so we will have uh, someone contact you. We'll, we'll okay, all right, you thank you very much. Extensive written notice, uh, written response rather. Okay, yes, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Our next speaker is Meg Johnson on S910. Welcome, Ms. Johnson. Chairman Barrow, members of the board, Dr. Jackson. I'm shocked and embarrassed for most of you that a citizen should have to be standing here in front of this school board for the purpose I am here tonight. Having served my community and particularly the children of my community years ago as a member of a local school board, I am amazed at how differently some of the members of this board view their civic responsibility and are abusing it. S-910 has been passed into law in South Carolina. It is not a novel idea. It is actually a return to a sensible and clear delineation of districts that will bring this county back to a simpler, single-member form of representation for the people in Berkeley County. I'm not sure why this board cannot abide by the will of the legislators and the people in Berkeley County. It appears that there is little or no regard among some of you for the trust you have been given to look out for the well-being of our children. Instead, it appears your positions of power have gone to your heads. The inconvenience this may cause some of you and the possibility that the will of the people might not align with your political education or social agendas appear to be driving your thinking right now. You are wasting the time, money, and trust you are tasked with using wisely for others, not for your own benefit. S-910 was carefully crafted by knowledgeable legislators. It is constitutionally sound and without legal defect. No judge will block or delay its implementation. You are already doing enough damage to this county, its schools, and its children. Our taxpayer money would be far better spent on the necessities for running our schools, essential personnel, books, materials, and other needs which directly impact our schools and our students. That you would even consider wasting thousands of dollars on legal fees is reprehensible. Your overpaid legal staff should be giving you accurate advice that S-910 <coughs> cannot be stopped or overturned to suit your desires. We all watched you take action a while ago to set yourselves up to be able to do just this, to protect your personal power. The action you took a little over a year ago wasn't popular then, and it is being exposed by what you are doing now. It is truly sad to stand here and document the folly, arrogance, and contempt of some of this school board's members who refuse to uphold the dignity of the office to which you have been elected. I recommend you find some semblance of decency somewhere and retract this decision. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I, can I please? Uh, not at this time. No. We don't normally make those comments. The next, uh, the next speaker is Mr. Henry Griffin on budget, teacher, and school staff day. Welcome, Mr. Griffin. Mr. Griffin, here he comes. Welcome back, Mr. Griffin. Good evening, Mr. Chair, Mr. Superintendent, other board members. I'm here just to comment on the budget and uh, anticipated raises for the teachers and staff. I feel like it's very necessary and I feel like any, any type of raises for staff and teachers is truly necessary because they have to compete with the outside world and I'm retired manufacturing 
I had a chance to meet a teacher that had left, well, she left teaching profession. And she was in a temporary job with the Census Bureau. And the pay that we got at the Census Bureau, for me, it was just a little pay because I was retired. But for her, it was a big deal. It was a lot more than she was making as a teacher. And I had some problem with that because the teachers that taught me made all the difference in my life. And I would like for Berkeley County to please do whatever you can to maintain and to keep, I mean to get and to keep good teachers because all the other things that we are trying to achieve in the county, we can't get it without good teachers. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Griffin. Our next speaker is Reverend Julius Barnes. His topic is the budget. Welcome back, Reverend Barnes. To the chairman of the board, barrels and members of the board, Superintendent Jackson, greeting to all of you. Thank Greetings. You. It is good to be here. As I said earlier tonight, I, I want to sit where you're sitting. And I understand the kind of decision that you have to make. Um, this budget that, that, that was presented tonight is a <clears throat> essential budget for this district. You know, uh, we, we need our teachers. We need our custodians. We need our bus drivers. We need, we need those who cook in the kitchen. We need our, 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 our staff persons who are, are classified staff, certified staff. We need everybody. Now, what I saw in this budget that was different, that impressed me, is that it was a budget that involved all your employees. You didn't leave anybody out in this, in this budget. And I think that's a good thing. But another thing in this budget that, that impressed me, no mill increase. There are no taxes increase in here. OK? And, and, and it means to me that, that with the funds coming into Berkeley County, it means that we're able, based on your fund balance, I think you are able financially, without a tax increase, to increase the salaries of your employees. If you don't do it, you're going to lose teachers. You're going to lose custodians. You're going to lose bus drivers. You're going to lose workers all around. Why? Because everybody else is pulling the same people from the same group that you're pulling from. So I, 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 I plead with you tonight to Put down the rocks, whatever differences may be between, because I, I, I know how we can be as board members. We can be different of opinion. But this issue tonight is so important. I ask you to put down the rock, join forces together for the betterment of the children of Berkeley County. Amen. Pass the budget. Thank you, Reverend Barnes. Our next speaker is with Mr. Willis Sanders on the 2022-2023 budget recommendations. Welcome back, Mr. Sanders. Good evening. Glad to see all of the board members. When I spoke earlier, there was the only um, maybe four of you. First, we recognize Mr. Barrow, our chairman, uh, Mr. Jackson, our superintendent, and the rest of you. I'm going to do something a little different than I did the first time. I'm going to do a little show and tell. And it's about the budget. This is a drawing of the mighty oak tree. Our Berkeley County School District is a mighty oak tree in the Tri-County area. Passing the budget, we will remain mighty. So I'm pleased, I plead with you, 
hope and trust that you will pass the budget. The second one is Mighty Lighthouse. Berkeley County School District is a mighty lighthouse. Let us continue to shine in the Tri-County area and over the state and over the country as a mighty school district. Passing the budget will enable us to do that. And I trust and pray that you will do that tonight for the best interests of the Tri-County area, for our children to be a mighty school district and a light for others to watch and emulate. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Sanders. Our next speaker is Ms. Cindy Fisk. And uh, regarding a statement on behalf of Dr. Kent Murray concerning the 2022-2023 budget. Welcome back, Ms. Fisk. Hello. Um, some of you were not here, so I decided to fill in another card so that way everybody in the board could hear what, I, what I'm reading from Dr. Kent Murray who is a professor of educational leadership. He was on the Berkeley County School Board from 2008 to 2016. Due to professional obligations, I am unable to attend the evening school board meeting. So retired Berkeley County School District teacher Cindy Fisk has agreed to share my concerns as a Berkeley County citizen. I write to you this evening to encourage you to support the superintendent's recommendation to raise teacher pay in Berkeley County School District for next school year. It is imperative that you remain competitive with other school districts in the recruitment and retention of classroom teachers. It is your obligation as a member of the school board to support the district administration in ensuring a qualified teacher in every classroom. The children of Berkeley County are counting on you to support their education. As a member of the board, you are keenly aware of the growing teacher shortage our nation, state, and county are currently experiencing. You can play an important role in minimizing this shortage for Berkeley County by remaining competitive with teacher pay. Teacher pay is the most important factor in recruiting new teachers to Berkeley and retaining those teachers currently in the district. The United States teachers generally only earn about 80% of what the other college educated workers earn on a weekly basis. Teachers under the age of 40 who left the teaching profession identified insufficient pay as their top reason for leaving the profession. As former member of this board, I know it is your obligation to ensure every child in your care receives a quality education in a classroom with a qualified teacher. As a school board member, you have the difficult job, but it is important responsibility for the children of our county. Their future is impacted by the decisions that you make. The eyes of our teachers, students, and citizens are all watching you to see that you address this teacher shortage in empty classrooms by remaining competitive with teacher salaries. As a citizen of this county, I ask that you make this difficult decision and approve the district's leadership recommendation to increase teacher pay so you may recruit and retain qualified teachers for Berkeley's children. Thank you for this opportunity to address the board. Thank you, Ms. Fisk. Our last speaker for this evening is Ms. Elaine Morgan on the 2022-2023 budget recommendation. Good Welcome, Ms. Morgan. Thank you. Um, Thank you and allow me to be here, Chairman Bauer, Superintendent Jackson, and members of the board. On behalf of the business community, you know, we need to have stable teachers with their employment. And I don't know if I can say anything better. Y'all have had all my friends up here already speaking. I just met Ms. Fist tonight, but my people from St. Stephen's are here talking about how important it is to move this budget on. I have a monthly meeting with my HR people. And I hate to tell you, it's probably one of the saddest meetings I ever have because they all are looking for employees. This is an employee market. And you have a budget that tells every employee they are important to you. I beseech you, please move forward and tell your employees that they are important to you and that they are secure. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Morgan. The next item is item number six is information coming out of the executive session and action items. Uh, those individuals, um, uh, 
that have made comments if you if you would like to leave now that's fine but uh, what we're going to do is we have three student in-house attendance appeals and one out of district attendance appeal so we'll hear those motions at this time mr. chair in the matter of student number one I move that we deny the appeal second we have a motion from uh, mr. McQuill and a second from uh, I couldn't was it miss miss Littleton to deny the attendance uh, appeal of student number one is there any discussion all in favor of the motion of denying the appeal please respond by saying aye aye, aye. any opposed nay nay the ayes have it by a vote of 8-1. Motion carries. Mr. Chairman, would the I'd like to make a motion for appeal number two for us to deny the appeal. Second. We have a motion from Ms. Tanner, a second from Mr. Ramsey to deny the attendance appeal of student number two. Is there any discussion? All in favor of denying the appeal, please respond by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, nay? Nay. Nay. Those members who voted in the affirmative, please raise your hand. One, two, three, five. And those who voted in the negative, raise your hand. One, two. Motion carries by a vote of, I think it was 6-3. Six, 6-3, three. Six, three, yeah. 6-3. Six, three. Six. Motion carries to deny the appeal. We'll hear the uh, motion for the attendance appeal of student number three. Mr. Chair, I move that we deny the appeal of student number three. Second. We have a motion from Mr. McQuillan, a second from Ms. Tanner to deny the attendance appeal of student number three. Is there any discussion? All in favor of denying this appeal, please respond by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, nay? Nay. Motion carries by a vote of 8-1. The appeal is denied. Mr. Chair, in the matter of student number one for out-of-state district appeals, I move to grant the appeal. Second. We have a motion from Mr. McQuill and a second from Ms. Walford to grant the out-of-district appeal of this student, student number one. There's only one. Is there any discussion? Uh, I would point out that the out-of-district individuals, if, if the board approves this request, will have to pay tuition fees. That are, that are required by the state for the Berkeley County School District from the sending school district. Any other discussion? All in favor of approving this and allowing this student to attend Berkeley County Schools with the tuition reimbursement, please respond by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, nay? Nay. nay. Those who responded in the affirmative, please raise your hand. In the negative, raise your hand. The motion carries by a vote of 7-2. Student is allowed to attend Berkeley County Schools with tuition. We now have uh, several uh, items coming out of executive session. Uh, Ms. Mr. Chairman, I move to grant the superintendent the authority to contract regarding changes to the Carolyn Lewis School as discussed in executive session. Second. We have a motion from Ms. Tanner, a second from Ms. Littleton, to grant the superintendent the authority to, con to contract regarding changes to the Carolyn Lewis School as discussed in executive session. Are there any, is there any discussion? All in favor of the motion to respond by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, nay? Nay. Nay. Motion carries by a vote of 7-2. Mr. McQuillan. Mr. Chair, I move that we grant the superintendent authority to enter into a memorandum of understanding as discussed in executive session. Second. We have a motion from Mr. McQuillan, a second from Ms. Tanner, to grant the superintendent the authority to enter into a memorandum of understanding as discussed in executive session. Is there any discussion? All in favor of the motion to respond by saying aye. 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 All opposed, nay. The motion carries 9-0. Mr. Chair, I move to accept the personal recommendations of the administration as discussed in executive session. Second. We have a motion from Ms. Littleton, a second from Ms. Tanner, to accept the personnel recommendations of the administration 
that were discussed in executive session. Is there any discussion? All in favor of this motion, please respond by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, nay. Ayes have it by a vote of 9-0. Mr. Chair, it's my honor to move to accept the recommendation of the administration to name David Kelly as the assistant principal for Philip Simmons Elementary School with a starting date of July 11, 2022. Second. We have a motion from Mr. McQuillan and a second from Ms. Tanner to accept the recommendation of the administration to name Mr. David Kelly as the assistant principal for Philip Simmons Elementary School with a starting date of July 11, 2022. Is there any discussion? All in favor of this motion, please respond by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, nay. Motion carries unanimously. Congratulations, Mr. Please introduce your uh, family or friends that are with you. <laughs> yeah, that's, all. that's their names, girlfriend, dad, and mom. I love it. We'd, we'd like a picture. Would you, uh, would you folks please stand and uh, let's get a picture with David? Yeah, <laughs> that's pretty important. Yeah, a, a minor slight. No. <laughs> Frank, Frank, you want to get in with him? Oh, she's good. I'm good. <laughs> she's turning them that way towards that wall. Get Frank. Mm -hmm. Mr. Wright. Mr. Wright. Uh, One more. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I move to accept the recommendation of the administration to name Ms. Natisha Ravenel as the assistant principal for Timberland High School with a starting date of July 11th, 2022. Second. We have a motion from Dr. Wigfall, a second from Ms. Wofford, to accept the recommendation of the administration to name Natisha Ravenel as the assistant principal for Timberland High School with a starting date of July 11th, 2022. Is there any discussion? All in favor of this motion, please respond by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, nay. Congratulations, Ms. Ravenel. <laughs> and now don't take all night, but introduce your, your family. <laughs> <laughs> and half a Timberland. <laughs> Let's come on up. Let's get the picture. Everybody's welcome. Not everybody. Jeez. The whole gang. That's a meeting there. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Timberland travels heavy. <laughs> I love it.
idea. Huh? Mr. Chairman, I move to accept the recommendation of the administration to name David Patterson as the assistant principal of Sedgefield Middle School with a starting date of July 11th, 2022. Second. We have a motion from Mr. Ramsey, a second from Ms. Littleton, to accept the recommendation of the administration to name Mr. David Patterson as the assistant principal for Sedgefield Middle School with a start date of July 11, 2022. Is there any discussion? All in favor of this motion, please respond by saying aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Congratulations, Mr. Patterson. Mr. Chairman, I move to accept the recommendation of the administration to name Courtney Johnson as the assistant principal principal for Berkeley Middle School with a starting date of July 11, 2022. Second. We have a motion from Ms. Walker to second. Uh, from Ms. Littleton to accept the recommendation of the administration to name Ms. Courtney Johnson as the assistant principal for Berkeley Middle School with the starting date of July 11, 2022. Is there any discussion? All in favor of this motion, please respond by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, nay. The motion carries. Ms. Johnson is on vacation and is not here with us tonight. <laughs> but Ms. Butler. We don't need a picture of Ms. Butler, do we? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I move to accept the recommendation of the administration to name Dr. Kelly Gebhardt as the principal of Goose Creek Elementary School with a starting date of July 1st, 2022. Second. We have a motion from Ms. Tanner, second from Ms. Wofford, to accept the recommendation of the administration to name Dr. Kelly Gebhardt 
as the principal of Goose Creek Elementary School with a starting date of July 1, 2022. Is there any discussion? All in favor of this motion respond by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Nay. Congratulations, Dr. Gibbs. Get a picture. Now at this time, if, uh, if you'd like to leave the proceedings at this time, uh, you're certainly welcome to, so that the board conduct, conduct its business. The next item is uh, committee assignments. We do not need any temporary committee assignments tonight. So at this point in time, we will go to agenda item number eight, which is a recess for the Finance and Capital Planning Committee to meet. At this point, I will call a recess of the regular meeting so that the Finance and Capital Planning Committee may convene. Mr. McQuillan. Thank you, Mr. Bear. I'm calling the Committee on Finance and Capital Planning to order. I declare that a quorum of committee members are present and would ask, has the media been notified and given proper notice pursuant to the Freedom of Information Act? Yes, it has. Do we have a motion tonight to approve the agenda? So moved, Mr. Chair. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, I'll call the question. All in favor, please respond by saying aye. 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 Eyes have it by a vote of three to zero. The first agenda item is contract change orders. Ms. Ashley Smith, you are recognized. Thank you. Good evening, Chairman McQuillan, Superintendent Jackson, and board members. As a part of the 2021-2022 capital budget, the board approved an owner contingency for Carnes Crossroad K-8 School, which is now the Carolyn Lewis School. Administration is now requesting the use of these funds for the following four change orders. The first change order is to provide ice and water shield over the entire roof as requested during a site meeting. This upgrade adds additional protection to the roof of the school. The district currently has other schools with this upgrade and this change order is $64,910.59. The second change order is to change the VCT tile and designated administration carpet floor tile finishes to LVT. 
The VCT as bid in the original scope of work is no longer available. This change in upgrade is comparable to the VCT that we are currently using for tile and carpet replacements in schools throughout the district. This change order is $141,022.58. The next change order is to provide permanent power to the water well at the ball fields at the Carolyn Lewis School. This is $11,759.35. And the final change order is to add internal brackets for the telecommunications request to support the Office of Technology. This is $1,214.61. Change orders total $218,000. $907.13. The current original sum of the contract is $47,825,800. With the change orders, the new contract sum will be $48,044,707.13. Move to approve. Do we have a second? Second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, I'll call the question. All in favor, please respond by saying aye. 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 Eyes have it by a vote of three to zero. The next agenda item is policy EBCB safety plans and drills. First reading, Mr. Tim McDowell, you are recognized. Good evening, Chair McQuillan, committee members, Superintendent Jackson. The administration is asking that policy EBCB be approved for first reading in the approval and the adoption process. This is a new policy mandated by the state effective July 2nd, 2018. The initial deadline for adoption was for the 2021 school year after the State Department of Education, the South Carolina Law Enforcement Division, and the Office of the State Fire Marshal developed guidelines. However, it was extended due to the pandemic. The state has alerted all school districts that the policy must be approved for this school year. Are there any questions? Move to approve. Second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, I'll call the question. All in favor, please respond by saying aye. 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 Ayes have it by a vote of three to zero. This time I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. We have a motion to adjourn that's been seconded. All in favor, please respond by saying aye. 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 We are now adjourned and we'll return to the regular meeting. We'll call the uh, return back to regular session where we can convene the committee reports from Academic and Innovation from Ms. Littleton. Mr. Chairman, the Committee on Academics and Innovation met on June 14, 2022. And on recommendation of the committee, I move to approve the Head Start Budget Expenditure Report for April 2022, Head Start Credit Report for April 2022, Revised Selection Criteria, Revised Head Start Teacher Job Description, and Transportation Waiver. We have a recommendation from the committee, and no second is required. Is there any discussion? All in favor of the motion to respond by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, nay? Motion carries 9-0. Also on recommendation of the committee, I move to approve the South Carolina State Department of Education and Structural Materials approved by the BCSD committee caravans selected by the individual school administrations. We have a recommendation from the committee and no second is required. Is there any discussion? All in favor of this motion respond by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, nay? Motion carries 9-0. Also on recommendation of the committee, I move to approve the proposed 2022-2023 local board approved and innovative courses as provided. We have a recommendation from the committee and no second is required. Is there any discussion? All in favor of this motion, please respond by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, nay? Motion carries 9-0. Also on recommendation of the committee, I move to approve the first reading of policy JICDA, Student Behavior Code, as presented. We have a recommendation from the committee and no second is required. Is there any discussion? All in favor of this motion, please respond by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, nay? Nay. The motion carries by a vote of 8-1. Also on recommendation of the committee, I move to approve the first reading of the administrative rule JICDAR, Student Behavior Code as presented. We have a recommendation from the committee and no second is required. Is there any discussion? All in favor of this motion, please respond by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, nay? Motion carries by a vote of 9-0. Mr. Chairman, that concludes my report. Next is the Committee on Finance and Capital Planning. Chairman, Mr. McQuillan. 
Mr. Chairman, the Committee on Finance and Capital Planning met on June 14, 2022, and on recommendation of the committee, I move to approve the out-of-state travel as presented. We have the recommendation from the committee. No second is required. Is there any discussion? All in favor of the motion, respond by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, nay. Motion carries 9-0. Also on recommendation of the committee, I move to approve the fl funding flexibility as presented. We have a recommendation from the committee. No second is required. Is there any discussion? All in favor of this motion, please respond by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, nay. Motion carries 9-0. Mr. Chairman, the next matter is a matter on which I have recused myself in writing, and I would ask that you present that item. I move to approve the issuance of the sale of the general obligation bonds of the school district and the principal amount of not exceeding $85 million for the purposes of repayment of the existing debt, funding capital projects, funding other initiatives of the school district, and paying the cost of the issuance of the bonds. We have a recommendation from the committee. No second is required. Is there any discussion? All in favor of this motion respond by saying aye. 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 Ms. McQuillan, for also the record, on, well, did recuse himself. The vote was 8-0. Motion carries. Also on recommendation of the committee, I move to approve the award of IFB 6432122 for ESSER 3 Selective Roof Replacement and Repairs for Boulder Bluff Elementary School to Keating Roofing and Sheet Metal Company Incorporated for the base bid work for a contract award of $2,457,300. We have a recommendation from the committee. No second is required. Is there any discussion? All in favor of the motion, respond by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, nay? Nay. nay. Uh, those that voted in the negative, please raise your motion carries by a vote of 7-2. Also on recommendation of the committee, I move to approve the award of IFB 644-2122 for ESSER 3 selective roof replacement and repairs for Marrington Elementary School to bone dry roofing for the base bid alternative one for a total contract award of $935,300. We have a recommendation from the committee. No second is required. Is there any discussion? All in favor of the motion, please respond by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, nay? Nay. In the negative, in uh, two, we had the motion carries by a vote of 7 2. Also, on recommendation of the committee, I move to approve the award of IFB 645 2122 for ESSER 3 selective roof replacement and repairs for St. Stephen Elementary School to AAR of North Carolina for the base bid plus alternatives one and two for a total contract award of. $1,654,750. We have a recommendation from committee. No second is required. Is there any discussion? All in favor of the motion, respond by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, nay. 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 In the negative, uh, raise your hand, please. Motion carries by a vote of 6-3. Also on recommendation of the committee, I move to approve the award of IFB 647-2122 for ESSER 3 selective roof replacement repairs for Goose Creek High School to AAR of North Carolina for the base bid plus alternatives 1 and 3 for a total contract award of $3,640,743. We have a recommendation from the committee and no second is required. Is there any discussion? All in favor of this motion to respond by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, nay? Nay. nay. Motion carries by a vote of 7-2. Also on recommendation of the committee, I move to approve the award of IFB 648-2122 for ESSER 3 selective roof replacement and repairs for Cross Elementary School to Southern Roofing for the base bid plus alternatives 1, 2, and 3 for a total contract award of $1,639,000. We have the recommendation from the committee and no second is required. Is there any discussion? All in favor of this motion respond by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, nay? Nay. Aye. Motion carries 7-2. Also on recommendation of the committee, I move to approve the award of IFB 649-2122 for ESSER 3 selective roof replacement and repairs for Hanahan Middle School to AAR of North Carolina for the base bid plus alternatives 1 and 2 for a co total contract award of $1,646,000. We have a recommendation from the committee. No second is required. Is there any discussion? All in favor of this motion respond by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, nay? Nay. Motion carries by a vote of 7-2. Also on recommendation of the committee, I move to approve the award of IFB 650-2122 for ESSER 3 selective roof replacement and repairs for J.K. Gordine Elementary School to AAR of North Carolina for the base bid plus alternatives 1 and 2 for a total contract award of $603,050. We have a recommendation from the committee and no second is required. Is there any discussion? All in favor of this motion respond by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, nay? 
Nay. Nay. Uh, uh, those who voted in the negative, please raise your hand. Uh, four. In the positive, raise your hand. In the affirmative. Motion carries. Motion carries by a vote of 5 4. Also, on recommendation of the committee, I move to approve the award of IFB 651 for ESSER 3 selective roofing and repairs for Westview Elementary School to Keating Roofing and Sheet Metal Company Incorporated for the base bid plus alternative one for a total contract award of $1,741,348. We have a motion excuse me, for a recommendation from the committee, and no second is required. Is there any discussion? All in favor of this motion respond by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, nay? Nay. Nay. Motion carries by a vote of 7 2. Also, on recommendation of the committee, I move to uh, approve the award of IFB 652 2122 to Praxier Distri Distribution Incorporated for welding equipment for an initial one year term valued at. $288,944.42 based on an initial project with the option to renew for four additional one-year terms for additional as-needed purchases. We have a recommendation from the committee and no second is required. Is there any discussion? All in favor of this motion, please respond by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, nay? Motion carries 9-0. Also on recommendation of the committee, I move to approve the award of FPB 656-2122 for painting services to B&R Painting, Omar's Floor Covering, Quintech Solutions for an initial contract term of one year valued at $1 million with the option to renew for four additional one-year terms for a total estimated contract value of $5 million. We have a recommendation from a committee. No second is required. Is there any discussion? All in favor of this motion, please respond by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, nay? Nay. Motion carries by a vote of 8-1. Also on recommendation of the committee, I move to approve the award of RFP 658 for a chemical and sanitation supplies program for child nutrition services to Sanitech Systems, Inc. for an initial one-year contract value of $90,819 with the option to renew for four additional one-year terms for a total contract value of $454,095. We have a recommendation from a committee. No second is required. Is there any discussion? All in favor of this motion, please respond by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, nay? Motion carries 9-0. Also on recommendation of the committee, I move to approve the award of FPB 659-2122 carpet cleaning services to Floor Dr. Roberts Cleaning Services, LLC, Sempra Avocado, LLC, doing business as Stericlean South Carolina for an initial one-year term valued at $75,000 with the option to renew for four additional one-year terms for potential contract value of $375,000. We have a recommendation from the committee and no second is required. Is there any discussion? All in favor of this motion, please respond by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, nay? Nay. Motion carries by a vote of 8-1. Also on recommendation of the committee, I move to approve Berkeley County School District's participation in the South Carolina Purchasing Alliance's RFP B2223 for perishable and non-perishable food products, paper, and related child nutrition supplies awarded to Cisco Raleigh for lot A valued at $8,547,141.15 for one year and a and Produce Company for lot B with a one-year contract valued at $253,526.50 with the option to renew for four additional one-year terms for a total potential contract value of $43,338.25. We have a recommendation from a committee. No second is required. Is there any discussion? All in favor of this motion, please respond by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, nay? Nay. Motion carries by a vote of 8-1. Also on recommendation of the committee, I move to approve Berkeley County School District's participation in the Horry County School District's IFB awarded to DFA Dairy Brands Fluid LLC doing business as pet dairy to provide and deliver perishable milk-related products for an initial one-year term valued at $1,905,418.50 with the option to renew for four additional one-year terms with a total potential contract value of $9,527,092.50. We have a recommendation from a committee. No second is required. Is there any discussion? All in favor of this motion, please respond by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, nay? 
Motion carries by a vote of 9-0. Also on recommendation of the committee, I move to approve the trial new child nutrition salary increases as presented. We have a recommendation from committee. No second is required. Is there any discussion? All in favor of this motion, please respond by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, nay. Motion carries 9-0. Also, the Committee on Finance and Capital Planning met earlier this evening, and on recommendation of the committee, I move to approve the four change orders for EDCON, Inc., as presented for a total amount of $218,907.13. We have a recommendation from committee. No second is required. Is there any discussion? All in favor of this motion, please respond by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, nay? Motion carries by a vote of 9-0. Also on recommendation of the committee, I move to approve first reading of policy EBCB safety plans and drills as presented. We have a recommendation from committee. No second is required. Is there any discussion? All in favor of this motion, please respond by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, nay? Motion carries by a vote of 9-0. At long last, that concludes my report. Thankfully. <laughs> Next are the reports from the Committee on Human Resources, Chair Kirsten Tanner. Mr. Chairman, the Committee on Human Resources met on June 14, 2022, and on recommendation of the committee, I move to approve the 2022-2023 salary book as presented. We have a recommendation from the committee. No second is required. Is there any discussion? All in favor of this motion, please respond by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, nay? Motion carries 9-0. Also on recommendation of the committee, I move to approve the first reading of policy GBGD workers comp as presented. We have a recommendation from a committee. No second is required. Is there any discussion? All in favor of this motion, please respond by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, nay. Motion carries by a vote of 9-0. Also on recommendation of the committee, I move to approve the first reading of policy GCCAC Family and Medical Leave Act as presented. We have a recommendation from committee. No second is required. Is there any discussion? All in favor of this motion, please respond by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, nay? Motion carries by a vote of 9-0. Mr. Chairman, that concludes my report. Thank you very much. The next item on the agenda is the second reading of the 2022-2023 general fund budget. Our Chief Financial Officer, Ms. Ashley Smith, you are recognized. Thank you. Good evening again, Chairman Barry, Board Member Superintendent Jackson. This is the second reading of the 2022-2023 General Fund Budget. The most recent state revenue projections are based on the conference committee version that we received from the State Department of Education last week. The revenue assumptions for 22-23 include a 7% increase in local tax revenue, the new funding plan, which now includes the at-risk funds and the aid to district funds to be rolled into the general fund, and no millage increase for the 22-23 school year. As you can see from the chart here, the last millage increase was in 2016-2017, and there was a millage decrease in 2019-2020 of 12 mills. The recommendation for the 22-23 school year is to remain at 151.8 mills. The revenue projections for next year include additional local tax revenue of $7.6 million, a slight growth in FILO of $519,000, EFA funding, state aid to classrooms and teacher salary supplements are included in the new formula, that is why they are zeroed out here on this slide. Projections from the state show an increase in retiree insurance of $2.1 million. The projected increase in bus driver salaries of 116000 and no increase for the next two items as those are capped. The reimbursement to property tax relief provided by the Office of Revenue and Fiscal Affairs is $35.8 million, which is a $3.4 million increase over last year. No projected increase to merchant inventory, manufacturer's depreciation, PIBA, and indirect cost. Impact aid and miscellaneous revenue are estimated to increase by 350000 And the new funding formula allocations are $142 million and $24.5 million based on the conference committee projections. That brings our total projected additional revenue to $30.4 million. 
the expenditure assumptions, mandates, and considerations for 22-23. Aid to district and at-risk state funds will be rolled into the general fund allocation. A mandated step increase for teachers that qualify. BCSD scale is up to 27 years. A mandated 1% increase in retirement for employers. A PIBA increase in health insurance of 18.1%. The 8% increase in bus driver pay from the state minimum bus driver salary scale and a yearly increase in our insurance coverage. On the expenditure side, we will have an increase in the general fund as a result of backpacking the aid to district and at risk salaries of 1.9 million. In addition, we have two schools transitioning administrative assistance to APs. A step increase for all qualifying employees um, is 4.73 million of that is teachers. The mandated retirement increase of 2 million, another 2 million for PIBA health insurance increases, 400,000 in our general and liability insurance increase, a bus driver increase of 215,000, and the 74 certified positions previously approved by the board. Other considerations include 31 classified positions based on growth for $1 million, $500,000 for our workers' comp self-insured program, and an increase to our schools for supplies, travel, and athletics in the amount of $115,000, which aligns with the formula-based allocations. <coughs> Vacancies are currently at $2.4 million, including salaries and benefits, and the total expenditure request on this slide are $21.5. Additional expenditures include a secretary with a start date of July 1st and assistant principal beginning January 1st, 2023 in preparation for the Carolyn Lewis School along with support including supplies and materials, funding to add volley boys volleyball to begin in the fall of 2022, which includes athletic supplements for coaches at eight of our schools in the amount of 23000 a 3% increase for all employees is $7.7 million, with the exception of bus drivers, bus aides, custodians, and instructional assistants. Those positions will be increased as follows. Bus drivers, from the previous slide, will starting pay will increase from $16 to $16.80. Um, the state minimum is currently at $8.44. An increase in custodial pay from $11.61 an hour to $14.75 per hour. That's $1.6 million. An increase in bus assistant pay from $10.90 per hour to $14 per hour, and that's $193,000. And an increase in instructional assistant pay from $12.73 per hour based on a 7.5 hour day to $15 per hour, and that's $1.3 million. There is also a recommendation for an additional safety position to support the safety and security department. Estimated salary and benefits is $102,595, and we are also requesting $111,000 for emergency or contingency use. As stated earlier in the public hearing, just to provide an example of what a 3% increase looks like for a classroom teacher, as you know, our scale with a bachelor's degree, zero years of experience is 40987 A 3% increase would bring the starting pay to 42 to 16 In addition, the board previously proved $1,000 from ESSER for classroom teachers, so that would bring it from 40987 to 43216 including the additional $1,000 incentive as starting pay for classroom teachers. Total expenditure request is $32.8 million. This budget also includes some budget neutral positions and other opportunities. There are four positions requested by the superintendent, including executive director for elementary, an executive director for secondary, a chief of staff, an operations officer that will be funded by a reduction to current budget allocations, including the superintendent's legal account, consultant fees, and other departmental cuts already identified. In addition, there are three positions requested by the Office of Academics and Innovation, and those will also be funded by cuts from the Office of Academic and Innovation to support these positions. And a tuition reimbursement program that's an opportunity for professional development and to support professional growth for our employees. Administration will establish a plan with targeted goals and strategies in an effort to grow and develop our employees. 
This last slide shows the comparison from the approved 2021-2022 budget and the projected 22-23 budget, along with recommendation for the 2022-23 budget, which includes a fund balance designation of $2,459,156 for a total budget of $3,701,919.19 three million seventy one thousand nine nineteen twelve administration is requesting approval for the twenty two twenty three general fund budget as presented are there any questions I got board question. have any questions or comments mr. Ramsey well my comment is with the budget meeting we had earlier tonight we had seven people that came up here and all seven said that we needed to pass this budget because we needed to give our teachers and our people a raise. So that was 100% tonight. Um, I was already of, of the mindset that 3% for our employees was not enough. The county just did a 5% increase that goes into effect two weeks from now. And said that wasn't enough either. I agree. Yeah, yeah. so my thought is with all this ESSER funding that we've gotten because of this pandemic, and also because of this pandemic, I won't say the number of open positions Berkeley County has right now, but it's a lot. And I also, our unemployment here in the Low Country is basically zero. Uh, I deal with industry every day, and the number one issue that we have is workforce. I'm talking with Trident Tech right now concerning daycares, because daycares can't get workers to come work. I mean, I can go industry across industry across industry. So it's not just an educational school district issue that we have of getting and keeping employees. So my thought, and this is just my personal philosophy, but for my support for this budget, instead of adding positions to the district office, my thought would be we might would even get leaner with the district office. And we would take that money and we would put it in to figure out how to give all our employees across the school district a 5% raise. So 3% raise for our employees when inflation is about 8%, when unemployment's basically 0%, when places like Nucor is even advertising for people to come work with them, where the average pay goes up a dollar every year in Berkeley County. Our average pay in Berkeley County is over $22 an hour. That's just average. You can't hardly hire anyone for $15 per hour or less. Berkeley County government just went to $15 per hour. We have a $372 million budget. It's all really what the philosophy is. And my philosophy is we need to figure out how to give our employees 5% instead of 3%. But instead of, again, adding positions to the district budget, we need to cut it. And that's, that's where my vote stands, just so there's no misunderstanding. What I want is a larger raise for our employees. Charleston County has stepped up to the plate. They're giving bonuses. There's, again, there's company after company just for, to come work for them. They say, hey, here's $2,500. So if we're going to compete, if we're going to be serious, the front lines are at the schools. The schools is where the magic happens. So we have to continue to always keep our focus on that from my perspective. So I want everyone to understand that's where my vote is. My vote is when we get where we're giving the employees 5% and that's our, our thought process, then that's when I'm starting to agree with it. But thank you. Okay. So I can piggyback on that. Um, so I can see where you're coming from, Mr. Ramsey, but then I also have, um, so I see both sides, right? So we, we have to kind of, yeah, we want to be better than 3%, right? We, we, we want to attract, we don't want to be just the minimum, but then we don't want to also streamline ourselves so much that it's kind of like, I'm, I'm, really, I'm trying to think of an analogy. Okay. When you're watching a game, right? We all watch games, baseball, football, soccer. You can't have the coach coaching and playing the game because then you can't have anybody calling the shots. So if we go too lean, we don't have the coach to be able to direct our children, but then we also need the people, the educators, and we want everybody in the schools to be able to 
be able to affect our children, right? So it's kind of like, I want my cake and eat it too. <laughs> but I don't necessarily think, I agree with you, I don't necessarily think that um, all of the positions are necessarily needed um, right now. I'm not saying they're not needed they're not needed, I'm just saying they're not needed right now. And this is my thought process and this is how my vote is gonna be going off of this, is that since COVID hit, education has pretty much changed a little bit, right? So our parents have been introduced to a way teaching is that we, we didn't know. So before COVID, I didn't know what happens when my children went to school. Bye, see you later, they come back, how was your day, blah, blah, blah. But then our parents been able to listen and hear and see how things happen. And then our, our teachers were ex experiencing something that they never had to do before, dual roles. They had to have the interaction with parents that weren't used to dealing with this, and it's the force in between. And then we have executives or cabinet members or administrations that's going down and telling people, what we should and shouldn't be doing, but realistically, no offense to anybody, but when was the last time they were in a classroom? It wasn't when, it was pre-COVID. So it's all misconstrued of how everything's gonna be misaligned, if that makes sense. So I think that, yes, we do need to be competitive with other districts, and we're also a growing county you know, Charleston's not growing as, as much as we are. We, we, we are growing, so we should be able to, to attain, get the best talent. But then I also think that we also need to think that people work for people, they don't work for an organization. And if we want to reflect that to gain people, we don't want to also cut our nose to spite our face, if that makes sense. So I think that it's not necessarily, we don't need to get, no, we, it's not no, it's just not right now. Does that make sense? So, um, I agree with, I, I don't know, like, is it there a way to give people more, like, is it feasible? I don't, I, like, I don't even know. I didn't, I didn't even know this was gonna like happen. Like, I'm just, hey, welcome to the public meeting. The way the budget currently stands, the only additional option is to increase the designation of fund balance for recurring expenditures to give additional raises. Okay, so I'd like to jump in and can we afford? Make a, what's that? Because we also have to be in consideration that we are opening a new school, and with that is going to become new teachers and the supplies and things like that, and we have to be fiscal responsible too. You know, um, we don't know what's going to happen with the economy. You know, I can, a gallon of gas is as much as a Starbucks cup of coffee. You know, so we have to be very fiscal responsible. So. This is a really, really hard decision, you know? What comes first, the chicken or the egg? Well, I think that some of the greatest stress that the administrators have right now is trying to have people sitting to teach the, the kids instead of teachers having to hop from class to class, trying to cover the kids that don't have teachers available. So I think that making our budget attractive to the teachers um, would solve a lot of the stress in the classrooms and with the administrators. So. What has been preached to me the, the two and a half years that I've sat on this board is we should always be taking the recommendations from our administration. They're the, one that is, they're the ones that are here. They're the ones that are doing the hard work for our employees and our students. And so having said that, I'd like to make a motion to approve the 2022-2023 budget as presented by administration for the benefit of every student in Berkeley County School District. We have a motion, do we have a second? A second. We have a motion from Ms. Tanner, a second from Dr. Wigfall to uh, approve the recommendation of the budget Aye. that was presented. So we will ask for discussion at this time. I think it was important for us to have a motion on the table and then have a discussion. So we'll continue the discussion. I do just want to put on the record that I do not believe that the public hearing was uh, noticed properly. State law requires 15 days notice for location, date, and time. We noticed that on June the 12th at 5 p.m. We started at 4.30. We did notice it again, but it was not 15 days notice. Um, and a gentleman who spoke twice um, 
a lot of people came and spoke twice to try to have the board hear them, but one of the gentlemen who spoke asked a question that apparently had been um, answered earlier in the presentation. So I just, I like things to be done very precisely and I want things to follow exactly what they're supposed to. So I have an issue with the time changing. I know that I'm that kind of person, but I believe we have to be precise. So I wanted to note that as my issue. Duly noted. Um, Is there any other discussion on the, on the uh, motion at hand? Yeah, so with, with being um, precise, I guess, because I don't even know the answer to this, I know that the budget has to be done by July 1st. Is that correct, Ms. Smith? When does the budget have to be done? Like, when do we have to approve this? Pass the budget by June 30th, yes. Oh, so tomorrow. Well, the day after tomorrow, yes. The day after tomorrow, okay. And if we don't, is there a fine or something? Um, no, but we have to pass a budget. It does not have to be exactly this budget, but we have to pass a budget before June 30th. Okay. So, does everybody understand that, that we have to like pass, like we have to pass a budget? So, do you want to come back today? Do you want to try to but, work it out today? Do you want to come back tomorrow? Like, gas is like eight dollars a gallon. So. We have to vote on this motion. Okay. Well. Well, well is there any? I mean, there's more discussion to be had. Yeah. I, I, there, the, here there's is, plenty of discussion, I think. All <laughs> plenty of discussion to be had. So let's let's start from the beginning. In 2017, there are positions that were taken away from this district when we were well over 34,000 students. You have Dorchester County District 4. You have other counties that, that have less students than we do. And they do not have the, the, they have more support than we do at the district level. Let me quote one of our people from our budget hearing. Where, where is it? Um, bear with me. I wrote it down. It was so good. Um, if we don't remain competitive, we're going to lose good educators. If you don't keep qualified teachers, you cannot enhance the education of our students. Um, these are just, these are from the public. If you're not gonna listen to your constituents, what are you sitting up here for? Anyone on this board that votes against tonight's budget doesn't have a care in the world for our students in Berkeley County School District. That's unfair. And should really That's contemplate their reason for, for being here. I don't know how to explain any clearer that proper oversight and guidance to our teachers ultimately benefits our students. It's a trickle down effect, guys. It starts at the top and it goes down. And our students get all the good out of our budgets. <clears throat> Everything that comes from these budgets, these teachers are dealing with $5 in gas and, and, and inflation of their groceries. I get it. I wish we could give, could give them the world, but we need to give them not only raises, we need to give them su support staff to help them through their years. Mr. Chairman. Mr. McQuillan. First off, I want to thank you, Ms. Smith, for all your hard work and the finance. Absolutely. Mr. Jackson and the administration. I'm, Absolutely. I'm a big proponent of um, heeding the advice of the administration, but also voting my conscience. And I, I think here I have a couple issues. One, Sally brought up the issue with the notice. I do think that state law requires that our notice be exact and precise as to when we're going to meet, where we're going to meet. It has to be 15 days in advance. And for whatever reason, it was not here. Um, number two, I agree with my colleague, Mr. Ramsey. I think our focus should be in the classroom and, and to our teachers and to our custodians and to our bus drivers and not adding ad additional positions to the district office. I've spoken with my constituents about that and they tend to agree and that's my conscience on that. And I will say I take strong issue with Ms. Tanner's statements that people who vote no don't care about the students of our district. I have two students, a um, third grader, and a rising first grader, and I care deeply about them and their classmates and all of the students in this school district. And just because I vote no and have a difference of opinion does not mean that I don't care about students. And I think that's an unfair and untrue statement for you to make. 
but I hear your position on that. And, um, but again, I want to thank everybody. I know a lot of people have hard work on this. We can agree to disagree, and we can do it civilly, and we can do it professionally, but you're not going to tell me that I don't care about our students. I deeply care about my children, all the children of this district, and that was very unfair of you to say that. Well, I would like to ask Dr. Richardson the deal with the meeting um, notice, and, and here's why, because was there not a meeting held earlier in the year by a prior board chair and legal counsel on this board that was not noticed? Okay, so that's a separate issue? Absolutely, but I just would like to know about tonight's. Okay, so um, regarding the notice, it went out 15 days prior, and it was timed for five o'clock. Under FOIA, you are allowed to amend the time of your meeting as long as it is noticed properly. It was noticed properly on yesterday that we moved up the time 4.30 so people could have additional time to comment. So that was an in intended to give the public additional time to comment. So if they showed up at 5, we still gave them the op opportunity to speak? Yes. Thank you. And so the meeting did go from about 4.30 to 5.15. And so we had additional time and there were no additional speakers. Thank you, Dr. Richardson. And just for the record, my, I'm not saying that I don't believe that our teachers should not get raises. I'm 100% for our teachers to get raises, for our custodian staffs to get raises, for our bus drivers to get raises. Um, I didn't see our SROs on the list. I don't see them getting raises. I know we can't control all of that, but that's something that has not done. I, I'm just saying that I don't, just because if my vote is no, it doesn't mean that I'm against raises. There could be different parts of the budget that I don't agree with. That doesn't mean that I don't care about students, my students, or any other student in the district. I'm trying to be very fiscal responsible, and I'm trying to do what's best for the district, and I'm also trying to think forward as far as we don't know what's going to happen. And sometimes, this is our first year going into the school year, Normalish. Let's go through this year and then see what needs to be done. Maybe there's something else that we need that we don't know about, and then we're going to say, what? We want to do this, we want to do that. I mean, what's one more year? What's one more year? We ask our teachers to work dually for how long? We ask our teachers to be stressed out for how long? We've asked our teachers to do all of this stuff for two years to exhaust themselves to the point where they don't even want to teach anymore. Which is we're, why they need I'm, support I'm talking, staff. please. We've asked them to do this for two years where they want to retire, but we can't ask our district level for one more year? That's, that's an unfair statement to say that I don't care. I think it's I care too much to stand up here and to say what we're all saying. But they're asking for support staff for our teachers, our teachers that have said they're exhausted. Everyone our that teachers, stood up here today, I'm, I'm talking, our teachers that have said they don't want to come back because <clears throat> they're tired. We're asking for that support staff. Who stood up here today, Kirsten? 100% said what? Teachers, custodians. They asked us to pass the budget that administration is requesting. That's what they all said. Okay. Is it your checkbook, or is it the county's checkbook? Is it everyone Excuse else's checkbook? Me? I'm just asking, because if uh, I, I think about it as I got I'm my checkbook, try, I'm everybody's supporting checkbook. Our administration. Ladies, ladies, come on now. You will suspend. Now, I've got some comments uh, with some questions as well. Ms. Smith, would you go back to the, to the slide where the administration is requesting those those additional. Is this the slide, sir? Yes. Okay. Would you explain revenue neutral positions? Yes, sir. So these budget neutral positions um, are positions that have been identified by either the superintendent or academics and innovation, and they each took their budgets and cut items that were from this year's budget to cover these positions. So it doesn't add to the balance at the end, but it is, it's budget neutral because they took something out of the budget and replaced it with these positions. 
So I will ask Mr. Ramsey to uh, to look at that, if you will, Mr. Ramsey. Are you are you saying that you think that we need to cut all of that, the 1.7, including the tuition reimbursement opportunities for professional development? Not the reimbursement part, but what I'm saying is, I want the support at the school level, not the district. Um, if we were doing anything, I would think it'd be more instructional. Coaches is something that helps directly at the school. But what I'm saying is I want a 5% for all employees. So I'm saying in order to get to 5% for all employees, we got to look at the whole budget and figure out how we get there. Because that's from my personal experience and my philosophy of everything that I'm seeing and dealing with. Getting and, and keeping workers is just that difficult. And I think 3% when inflation is at 8% just doesn't cut it. So what I'm saying is a much bigger discussion than just the discussion we're going to have here tonight. The second item there is for ELA coordinator, receptionist, director. And so in addition to the ones that uh, would be directly working with the superintendent cabinet, basically the first level, you're, you're saying that the 730, I, I'm doing the math, okay? Oh, it's going to take more than just a million dollars to yeah, get so, so 5% you're... for all employees. I fully recognize that. So what I'm saying is we got to look at the whole budget if we want to get to five, my 5%. Five but that's just one vote. That's just me. We got nine board members. So if you want to ask each board member what they want to cut to well, get to 5%, we can. But I think that's yeah. kind of a waste of our time to sit here and ask me what we think we're going to cut to get to 5%. Because 5% is going to take, I am saying yes, cut a million out. Okay. And, and come back down, okay. but we're going to need several more millions. Uh, so, um, Ms. Smith. Yes, sir. The budget as presented is over $2.4 million out of the projected revenues. Is that right? Yes, sir. And so to increase the budget as it stands right now, it would be $7.6 million um, as a designation of fund balance to increase it by another 2%. If you, and then we would decrease if what Mr. Ramsey was speaking of earlier by a million, it would be 6.6 .6 million. Designation of fund balance. So if you took this 1.2 away. It would be about 6.6 .6 You'd still yes. have over $6 million on paper coming out of the fund balance. If you don't change anything else. If you don't change yes. anything else. Let me, let me make a couple of observations here, and, and Mr. Jackson has rightfully so sent information to each board member concerning um, like districts as well as districts that are much lower in terms of, uh, of student population. And he has compared, rightfully so, the organizational charts of many of the districts surrounding us and throughout the state and we are woefully inadequate in terms of, of the sustainability of satisfying the concerns and the needs of the individual schools because of the district staff shortage. Ms. Tanner is correct that there has been a, uh, a reduction in district office staff. And let me just say this. Um, we have two administrative supervisors for 37,000 students, two. Mr. Jackson is requesting two more. Dorchester has four already and they've got 22,000 students. Come on, we're putting the workload of for 37,000 students on the head and shoulders of two people. You think they can do an adequate job? There was an audit several months ago and the overlying theme and the, the progression of, of the summary or conclusion of that was that the Berkeley County School District is being, and I quote, reactive rather than proactive because of staffing shortages. All Mr. Jackson is trying to do is, with revenue neutral, try to get the number of people that can sustain the amount of workload because I've been there. I was the supervisor for the middle and high school for seven years. And it was a task that was daunting and, and you just couldn't do it all. 
you can take a phone call, you can take 20 phone calls a day, but that one phone call might take two hours to adjudicate or to, to resolve. We, we're working in a, in a situation now where we need some help, not just at the school level, we need it administratively. Mr. Jackson is performing, you may or may not agree, you may not know this, he's performing two tasks. He was a deputy superintendent, now he's the superintendent. He was also, uh, whatever the title was, he's doing both of those jobs. Last Friday, Friday's off, he was, he was working in a capacity that the superintendent is not supposed to be doing. He's, he needs some help, folks. Now that's not to say that we need to, we need to do all of it. We need to do all of it. But Mr. Jackson and his staff need some assistance. And I, if, if you recall, the budget workshop that we had several months ago, there was a 1% raise on the table. And about two months ago from this day, it's, I made the, the motion or the proposal to go from one to three. Additionally, with the $1,000 from the ESSER. That's a start, that's being fairly competitive. But we've got to look at the holistic picture, not just at the school level, but also the overview of the organizational charts that demand more staffing at the district level. So, and let me just say this, I'm going to say it. Last year, this board, not unanimously, but we approved a, a, a bonus and an increase. We were roundly criticized by members of the public for saying that we were going to take $7 million out of the fund balance to pay for that. Not one penny came out of that fund balance. Not one dime. In fact, over $2 million went back in, if I'm not mistaken, Ms. Smith. So we need to do the right thing in all areas, not just in terms of the salaries for the, for the, uh, for the teachers and for all of our employees, because if there's anybody on this dais that, that respects the people that work in the trenches more than I do, I don't, they're just not here. Because for 53 years, I've, I've been a part of the Berkeley County School District started teaching in 1969 and all the way through for 53 years this has been my home and I want to see it get back to where it used to be. I want all of us to succeed and we have to do this together. The bickering and the carrying on and the that that's that's has no place in this. I respect everybody's opinion. But it's my considered opinion that we need to approve the budget as presented by the superintendent and his staff. And I'm sure there'll be some additional discussion. Mr. Chair. Um, Mr. Wright. I would like to ask our superintendent a question. Uh, Mr. Jackson, can you clarify these positions that some of the board members may have some problem with and how it will you know, improve and help our current administration with their responsibility going forward. Could you just, you know, make it very explicit so that they would, we would all understand it or those that don't understand it would have a better understanding of why you need these positions to improve our district going forward? Yes, sir. Um, <clears throat> so what you see up on the screen in the presentation, you see two executive director positions. Uh, those executive director positions um, be for leadership development of school improvement. So they will work directly with the schools. Mr. Barrow stated that there, we currently have two um, of those individuals working in that capacity now in responding to the 47 schools and 37,000 students that we have. And at any particular point in time or any day, uh, they may receive, their office may receive 10 to 20 uh, different phone calls or issues and that's coming directly either from parents, the schools, and occasionally I get contacted directly, and I'll relay that information uh, to those individuals, or some, on occasions, board members may contact me, and I'll relay that information as well. Um, we're, at this particular point, we're staffed at that position just well enough to respond to 
those issues that we may have. One of the um, initiatives that I discussed starting last year was leadership development. And um, our folks are so swamped, they don't really have the time to get to that point where we're working on more leadership development. And going by the schools just to go by the schools as, a, as opposed to going by the schools because there is an, an incident. And so that's what those two positions would be for. The chief operations officer would be just that. Currently, um, the, typically the way your operations department is set up, you would have your uh, facilities, maintenance, capital projects will fall under that umbrella, as well as transportation, as well as uh, possibly safety and security. Um, you know, those safety and security transportation are currently under different areas. It's kind of misaligned. Right. Um, and maintenance, facilities, capital projects is, is with technology now, uh, with Ms. Driggers. And while she's doing a, a phenomenal job, um, she's not here to defend herself, so I hesitate to say too much, but I've had conversations with Ms. Driggers. And while she enjoys the challenge, um, it's very difficult to do both of those enormous tasks um, adequately, uh, well, exceptionally, because she doesn't like adequate. So it's, it's tough to do both of those things exceptionally. And that's what the chief operations officer would be doing, would supervise that department. We're in the process, now we're growing. Everyone knows that we're growing. We anticipate uh, not just another, more student growth by enrollment, we anticipate adding more schools into our system. More schools means more construction. Uh, that's, we had a large conversation tonight, earlier in the back, uh, just complex issues that come up, land acquisition, et cetera. Um, uh, Mr. Barrow's correct. I've been extremely heavily involved in that process. Um, I was out last Friday to put my eyes on and feet on um, the site last week. Uh, that's something that the operations officer would do. Um, we're, again, we're getting it done. We're getting it done extremely inefficiently, though, I would say that. The chief of staff, that person would assist me directly um, with respect to, uh, we're, we're becoming a more complex district now, uh, more sophisticated district. Uh, it's a lot of engagement with governmental agencies, officials, organizations, things of that nature. And that individual would assist with the follow through, uh, any sort of uh, interdepartmental projects, tasks, et cetera, uh, that person could help assist and make sure we stay on our timetable. And, and, and one of those persons would be almost like a deputy superintendent is what you're really saying is, or the chief, uh, would, would that person be similar to at one point when you were the deputy superintendent to the superintendent, you were like the go-between person between the superintendent the, and everybody else. The chief of staff could function in that capacity. In that capacity. So are we saying that we're in the 21st century right now and we do not need to have a chart similar to that? I know, Matt, you are very bright gentleman. I have a lot of respect for you. When we look at that chart, here's the superintendent here. And underneath the superintendent is who? The chief executive officer or, super, or deputy superintendent that actually is dealing with all these other parts and then reporting to the superintendent so that we all can be inclusive in what's going on. But I don't need my superintendent, honestly speaking, to be concerned about a transportation issue. Not that he's not concerned, but he needs to have someone else dealing with all those small things so that he can be dealing with the big things so that he can be at these conferences in Mount Pleasant like you were. The other day I saw the video, but if you were there speaking about the growth of Berkeley County, along with Johnny Cribs, who is the supervisor of Berkeley County. The two of you are there, and I was very impressed about what Berkeley County is doing and sharing that and having these shared experience with other, you know, like counties. So what, what I'm really trying to say is that let's be for real about where we are as where a superintendent is supposed to be and a CEO of this district, and that CEO has other people and one man person or two or three underneath him carrying out the responsibility with those other superintendents or other supervisors out in the field. How many schools do we have now? 47. 47. And we're about to have, what, 49 pretty soon? We've got 48 coming, 48. 49, yes, et cetera. How many schools are each of those super supervisors responsible for? Are we breaking them down? Elementary, high, middle, how do we, how do they manage those schools currently right now? 
With the two, it's roughly half. We have slightly more than half um, of our schools are elementary schools. And then the rem remainder are secondary. I would say around 26 elementary schools. So with the remainder being secondary. That's a difficult challenge. <laughs> I, I don't know. I think um, I don't see where we're asking for too much in this budget. I almost don't think we're asking enough, as uh, we're saying, in terms of a 5% increase in salary pay, plus what we have here for the superintendent to be able to do his job effectively. If we want him to be successful, if we also want to be able to evaluate him. See, there's a funny thing come when we begin to evaluate people. If we stop them from having the resources that they need, then how can we evaluate them if they fall short? I was, I was always told to evaluate someone that is working, that's working with you, the CEO, when they bring their concerns and, and, and suggestion, if you stop them from being proactive and doing the things that they need to do, then how now do we evaluate them at the end of the year? How can we say that you've been successful, you haven't been successful, if we have not given you the resources that you really need to be effective? You know, and, and, a, and a relationship between the superintendent and the board should be that way. We want to give him autonomy to do what he needs to do so that we can evaluate him. If we stop him from having those resources, then we cannot evaluate that person properly. That's my position going forward. I'm not here to take side, but I'm here to try to be very effective. I've been doing it for 24 years, and I swear I'm tired. I really am. <laughs> because it used to be where we could see that we weren't where Charleston was because we didn't have the resources, we didn't have the money coming in. And now we're getting there, and we're still trying to work behind the eight ball. Makes no sense to me. And I know that we're much brighter than that, because we're trying to produce wonderful students, great teachers and teacher support from our staff. And how will we do that without having the resources? That's my position. Ms. Smith. Yes, sir. What is the current fund balance? It's 103 million as of June 30th, 2021. Wow, as of last year. Didn't we add a couple million in there? Um, I think we will come out um, in the positive this year once the audit is complete, yes sir. So let's say we got 105, 106 million dollars in the fund balance. What's the required by, by district policy, 15%? 15%. Which is about 40 million. 40 to 50. that in my head, but I can do it on a calculator. No, that's okay. So <laughs> all I'm saying is we, we're well over double the requirement that the school sir. board has yes, placed on itself in the fund balance. And I'm, I'm saying all of that to say this, that we've got some options here. You know, we can look at the, the, the motion on the table. We can also look at uh, doing away with, with uh, those positions. But we can also look at adding another percent or two and keeping these positions. We, these positions are $1.2 million. That's not even a half of a percent of an increase for all of our employees, is it? Because it's $2.5 million for a percentage increase for all employees. Is that right? $2.5 million for a percentage increase? Yes. So a, an additional two would be about $5 million. Correct. So if we added another mill, I mean, excuse me, another percent and kept it like it is instead of a $2.4 million over the amount, it would be 4.9. Yes. So we can do both. Last year, we absorbed $7 million easily because we, we were supposedly on paper going to go down $7 million. And because of the conservative estimate of the growth and the, and the taxes coming in, we didn't have any of that fund balance taken out. In fact, we added to it. Could be the same scenario this year. Even if it's not, we're talking about, we're talking about $1.2 million out of our budget. And I, I just, I think we can do both, Mr. Ramsey. I think we can do exactly. Not even. Uh, Ms. Smith, can you um, tell me that $2.5 million, that's for every employee in the district or that's all at school level? So the $2.5 million for the 3% or 1%, so an additional 1% is $2.5 million. 
That is only for the employees. That's all employees except for the ones that we listed earlier today. So your bus drivers, your instructional assistants, it excludes those employees because they're getting more than a 3% raise. So they're excluded from the additional percentage. So that includes every other employee in the district. Okay, so, and I know you're not gonna be able to do this for me off the top of your head. If it was all support staff and all school level employees, If it was all all employees? No. No. Just support staff and all school level employees. There's no way I can give you I was that. Say I know you I can't give it to me right now, but what I'm <laughs> saying is is that we've tried to do it in the past and it was yeah. not effective and it was not that much money. Just we've tried we tried to parse it up. Two things happened. One, it didn't really it was a very minuscule amount of money compared and we offended a lot of people because there are people in the classroom who aren't classified or they're part-time and they fall in a particular category and they have to parse all those people out and try to decide what bucket they go in and it's really difficult. It is. And, and may I say something? I know this evening we're, we're focused on the general fund, but we also have to consider, and, and I, of course, think a 5% raise is amazing, and I think it would be very well deserved for all employees, but we have all these other funds that we have to consider as well. So all of our federal funds, when we add that percentage increase, it also affects um, the Office of Federal Programs, it affects our state grants, and it eliminates the additional money set aside that we're doing for um, strategies and innovative um, things in our schools. So we just have to consider that it's not just affecting the general fund when we increase that, it affects all the funds throughout the district. So it is going to affect child nutrition, um, all of our federal programs. So that's something we do need to consider. I mean, I think a 5% increase is wonderful, but we also have to think of the impact that it makes on other funds as well. Thank you. We're going to wait till Mr. McQuillan gets out to see if there's any more. Is there any more Step discussion? Step out for a second. I can let him know we're ready. Okay. All right. Here it comes. Is there any more discussion on the on the motion at hand? The motion at hand is to accept the administration's recommendation as proposed. Any other discussion? We'll call the question. All in favor of this motion respond by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, nay. 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 The, will the ayes please raise your hand? Will the nays please raise your hand? I don't know. Okay, the motion is not carried, but vote of so did you abstain, Ms. Marone? I feel like, uh, oh, this is like, I, my conscience says, I, hearing from what everyone tells me, I'm sorry, there's other departments and they just feel like that they need support too. So it's kind of like I, I agree with chief of staff and I agree with the operations officer, but for the elementary and secondary, I feel like that we could put those two positions and we could figure it into the school somehow with a mental health or other, other positions. We can get them into the schools to see what we need to do this year to bring it back next year because we don't have somebody really working into the schools this year to see what is going on. This is going to be the new norm uh, to, to work hand in hand to see what is actually working and then bring it back to make a new position because those two positions that we're hiring for could be something totally different next year because things are different. Ms. Moran, no. we're just voting on what we're Nay. doing right now. What now? I didn't hear, what was that? I didn't hear you. And we're voting on what's proposed right now. Nay. Hi, Mr. Chairperson, in light of the motion failing, I'd like to make a continuing resolution to operate under the status quo until next month. Second. 
Okay, before we act on that motion, I, I'm assuming I'd like to know if Ms. Marone is recusing herself or, or abstaining from the vote. She just voted. She voted no. I didn't say, I didn't hear. She said nay. Oh, you voted nay. Okay, all right, so the motion fails. Ms. McQuillan. In light of the motion failing, I'd like to make a um, motion for a continuing resolution to operate under the status quo until next month. Second. We have a motion from Mr. McQuillan, second from Mr. Ramsey, to operate under a continuing resolution. That basically means we're operating under the same budget as we have now until the board reconvenes and makes some sort of judgment on the 2022-2023 fiscal budget. Is there any discussion? There's some, uh, Mrs. Smith, I thought you said that we needed to have this budget passed by June 30th. We can pass a continuing resolution. The only thing about a continuing resolution is the pay increases that you support, we cannot pay retroactively. We've already been down that little road before. You cannot pay retroactively. So that's the only thing about continuing. You're continuing your pay until the time we pass a budget with a pay increase. Yes. So I don't know if we want to try to get to the point where there's a budget that passes or we're, we're going to go status quo and come back in July. Dr. Richardson, can we do a continuing resolution to maintain the status quo but add the increased salary position so that our teachers can go ahead and get the increased pay? Okay, no. So a continuing resolution means you continue on what you are now. So the status would have to ma maintain the status quo, basically. Can I make an amendment in saying that I would like to make a motion to the budget, except excluding the... Okay, so... so Wait, I'm sorry. Got, yeah, you gotta vote that down. Got right, so there's a motion on the table right now, so that motion has to be dealt with. I move to table, Mr. McQuillan. Yeah, I'll motion. withdraw my motion. It's withdrawn. Okay. Table's withdrawn, I mean, the motion's hold withdrawn. On, hold on, let me, let me go back. Second. Was his motion seconded? Yes. Okay, so there's no withdrawal unless the board agrees. So you actually have to deal with the motion because now it's on the floor for the body. Okay. So we have to call a question as to whether we agree with or deny or deny the continuing resolution. Resolution. I correct? can make a motion to table it, though, can I? So if you make a motion to table it, then and you're just going to never. You need to. Let me, let me think about it for a minute. If you take, just, it's easier If you to vote just it down, and it's going to have a hard time bringing it back, right? If you vote it down so you can entertain another motion, you're going to have a hard time bringing it back. If, if you table if the, it. If anybody from the affirmative brings it back, you can bring it back. Okay. So. All right, let's can, call the question. Okay. All in favor of the continuing resolution uh, proposed by Mr. McQuillan, please respond by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Nay. 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 The nays have it by vote of. Raise your hand if you voted nay, please. Four, five. The motion is is denied. It fails. So do we have another motion on the budget? Just real quick point of clarification. So if this, if Miss Maroon's motion fails or something doesn't pass tonight, we can raise it again tonight if we vote it in the affirmative. No, the chief of staff. Okay, perfect. If Thank you. No, no, no. So the affirmative of the winning I'll, I'll make the motion. I got you. Okay, so, but so, I, some people or the other can bring it back to the table if we can't come to an agreement. Right. On the, the folks, the motion carried with the nays, basically. So anybody from the nays can bring it back. Got it. They're cutting stuff out. Okay. Somebody put Is there another motion on the floor? So I make a motion to approve the budget as proposed with the exception of the executive, executive director of elementary and executive director of secondary positions. Can I do that? We, you can do it. Is, is, there, a, <laughs> is there a second? He's got to put a second uh, there, I'll put a second so we can have discussion. Is there any discussion? I, I am adamantly opposed to this because having personal experience in dealing with multiple issues every day as an administrative supervisor, you're talking about two people handling 47 schools. Let's get real, folks. This is absurd. 
This is insane. We've got to have at least two more inter, uh, administrative supervisors, and I believe we need to have a chief operations officer to, because we need somebody to do buses. We need somebody to do capital projects. We need somebody to do maintenance. We need somebody to do food services. All of those could be under the chief operational officer. So uh, your motion was never seconded, so. It was by Sally. It, it you, was by Ms. Walker. Okay, I, I gave Ms. Marone a second so we could have discussion. Right, and well. The reason why I made the motion is because I don't agree that you're right, we shouldn't just have two people. I believe that we should have more and they should be in the schools, not in the administration level. That is why I made the motion. And your point was, let's wait and see how we go next year and if we need to add positions we can add them at that point in time correct I, I i feel like that going into this school year we might experience things that we've never experienced before and let's see what we really need before it's, we get these positions last year. that was last year i don't know is it appropriate for me to speak during this mr jackson your your uh, your input is well uh received i just don't want to hire people to let him go he's superintendents have an opportunity well so I, I understand and respect everyone's perspective. And we're, we're at this point now where we're talking about reducing the number of requests. And I can respect that. We've worked through this year. We've worked through last year. We've, I've been in the district, at the district level for a while now. I've seen it when we've had the previous, previously noted amount of staff. I've worked and I was a part of the reduction and so I've seen that too. I've also had an opportunity to witness the district grow in terms of enrollment and in terms of number of, numbers of schools. Numbers of schools e equal uh, additional principals, additional assistant principals, more parents, et cetera. If we're going to take a reduction, I will, enter, I will support a reduction from the chief of staff because the folks at the school level need additional support. We talk about our leadership development and capacity all the time. Quite frankly, I did share the information with all of the board members uh, with the comparison of other districts. And we're saying like districts, and what I did, I selected purposefully, selected the districts that were smaller in size, lower in enrollment to show by comparison their allocations versus ours and i do believe we we could use probably more than the two additional staff uh, to support the schools and so but we we need those two uh, we're 1200 square miles uh, oftentimes those folks are called on to be on site and so if they're in cross and the secondary person gets a call from Philip Simmons, they have to go. Well, the secondary person gets a call from Goose Creek, they have, or Hanahan, they have to go there as well. And so we desperately need that assistance at the school level. Um, as far as additional support for uh, mental health, uh, we, we, we work directly with our Department of Mental Health uh, to provide clinicians for those students. Uh, we saw our presentation, and you'll, we will hear another presentation later on tonight from our social workers, and they will talk about the work that they do in our schools and for our students and their families on a day-to-day -day basis. And so if we're entertaining a reduction, I'd rather not have the assistance myself and allow those executive directors to remain in place so that they can adequately support our schools and help with our leadership development in addition to the operations officer. Even though I enjoy it, um, I, I love it a lot. It's, it's not very efficient. Um, it's not a very efficient process at this particular point in time. And some of the assignments that we have are misaligned. Um, our transportation is not where it needs to be. And transportation should be under the operations umbrella. So I don't, I, I don't understand why everyone is beating up on the positions that our superintendent's asking for, and no one has said a word about the three positions that academics and innovation have asked for. Why can't those be cut so that we can give our administration 
the support, our, our administration and our teachers the support that they need. Has anybody, I, Mr. Jackson, if we cut the three positions from academics and innovation, is that about the cost of cutting the two executive directors? I believe so, you account for salary and benefits. Okay, thank you. And so um, I had a conversation just this past week with the chief officer, I wanna make sure I say her title right, Ms. Taylor, uh, chief. Administrative officer. Administrative of secondary schools. And she could not sing loud enough about how much help she needs. She was beside herself about the assistance that she needs in the two executive director positions that are up there. So if we're going to cut something, I'm in favor of cutting academics and innovations request in order to get the help that we need to our schools. Kelly, you keep saying um, that we need them to be in the schools, and that's what those positions are. I just want to make sure you know that. Like That's what those two positions are. They're meant to be in our schools and helping our schools. I don't want us to play one against the other. When I say that, uh, I think that Mr. Jackson has, has taken the, the high road and saying, well, in spite of the fact that I know that I need a chief executive officer, I would do away with that position, but I want my other people to be able to do their job effectively so that I can supervise them as well. I mean, I think that's very honorable. Absolutely. I, I mean, for me, you know, I, I'm just saying, but you know, as far as playing one, you know, against the other, I, we, we, we need them. I, I mean, and I wasn't I'm, trying. I'm, I know you are. Okay, I wasn't trying I'm just saying so that we can make sure that we're coming together because at the end of the day, we're doing this for these students and teachers and principals and parents. Absolutely. And, uh, we, and also for this district. You know, I don't want to be embarrassed tomorrow when, when people call me about Berkeley County and why we can't pass a budget and for our schools. I mean, I'm just, I, I just don't understand it myself. And maybe if, we, uh, if I don't do anything else ever again on this board, I would like to say that I'm doing what we are supposed to be doing, passing budgets, building schools, setting policies, and et cetera, and also hire the superintendent who we have given the responsibility to run in this district for us. So uh, I, I'm, I'm there. I will accept your recommendation now, Mr. D Mr. Jackson, because you're saying you would get rid of one just to help the other uh, parts of the school district. If I agree with it. Well, you know, I made a recommendation, the board has spoken, so in a, in a matter of trying to um, help with this process, yes, I'm, I'm willing to do without so that my folks can have the additional support that they need. I have conversations with them on a day-to-day -day basis, on, and, and I see the volume of calls or the emails that come in. And so uh, they need that additional support. So I would gladly do without so that they can have if that's the situation that we're in. Let me make a comment. Well, can we call, well, how about this? Can we call the motion, call the question on Kelly's motion, and sure. then somebody make a motion in line with the superintendent's recommendation? Any other discussion on the motion from Ms. Maroon, seconded by Ms. Wofford? All in favor of this motion respond by saying aye. All opposed, nay. 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 Motion is defeated unanimously. Is there another motion? Mr. Chairman, I make a motion. Ms. Tanner. I make a motion to approve the 2022-2023 budget as presented, striking the chief of staff position under the budget neutral positions. Second. We have a motion from Ms. Tanner, a second from Mr. Wright, striking the chief of staff retaining the two administrative officers and the operations officer, is that correct? The two executive directors and operations officer, yes, sir. Okay, any discussion? Hearing none, we'll call the question all in favor of this motion of retaining the two administrative officers as well as the operations officer, please say, uh, aye. 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 Any opposed, nay? Nay. Aye. 
Okay, the eyes, raise your hand. Four and the nays, raise Sorry, your hand. I can't do that, Mr. Jackson. Okay, the motion is defeated. So we're quibbling over a couple hundred thousand dollars out of a budget of 300 and <laughs> some odd million. Uh, when we know, when we all know that it's that these things are are requested through the uh, through the audit process, and the superintendent and his cadre have made a an impassioned plea for some assistance at the district level in order to assist the building level. See, what people don't may understand is that people in the district level aren't sitting up there in white castles all day and sitting at a typewriter. No, they're going out to the schools. They're doing the things to assist principals and to assist teachers and coordinate math and language arts and spelling. And it just boggles my mind that we're, we're at a point where a couple of hundred thousand dollars is going to keep us uh, transfixed on something that I don't know what it is. We're transfixed on, on denying something that we all know is needed. It bothers me. I see no purpose in this. But uh, we have had several motions and none of them have been approved. The, the, the problem is, is that we know that we need our teachers, we need more raises, and that the there is administrative positions that need to be held, and then there's other positions that feel like they need the support. So there's that mix in between, and then of course, there's that balance. So I don't know what it is, but I could tell you that the, I feel very proud and honored that we have a superintendent that is willing to give up himself to be able to make that. And you can make that face, Mr. Wright. I, I understand that this is a very difficult decision, but I cannot sit here and make decisions that's going to affect our students so, and Morrell, not do the right is, thing. What is the resolve? What is the resolve? You tell us, what do you feel is the resolve? Because I don't know, why, why do I have to be the designing factor? But what you're saying, workshops, we've had all of these things to whereas we as a board could have sat down and figure out what we needed to do. Yeah, right, so that's right, but we don't communicate as a board. For that's the problem, to, and it's personal. Because not, everyone has a personal opinion and we're not focusing on what Dr. the real Wigfall issue is. Dr. Wigfall rarely speaks. Could we allow her the I, opportunity to speak? I'm embarrassed. And that's sometimes that's why I don't speak because some of the things that I hear, we are not together. We are not a, a together board. We've had several times to where we could have sat down as a board and figure out what we needed in regards to this budget. This administration and the superintendent sat down together many of times to figure out what they needed. We had an audit done, an assessment to tell us what we needed. And yet we sit here and bicker about what we're not going to do. There were three times to whereas a motion failed. So you could have said exactly what you needed to say in regards to having a, a resolve to this problem. So now I'm asking you, what is the resolve? What is it that you want to see? Because the superintendent sat here and said he would do without in order to help his people. So what is the resolve? Because we will not sit here and allow, Ms. Smith stated that we needed to pass a budget June the 30th. That's two days. So what are we gonna do? So do not sit here and say, well, I don't know. Because we had months to figure this out. So and, Ms. Everyone had, and everyone had an opportunity to speak with Ms. Smith. You didn't have to wait until tonight or speak right. with Mr. Jackson. There is open communication. They have open doors. So to sit up here tonight and, and act like it's the first time you've heard about it's what's being presented is not fair to our administration that has worked so hard on this budget. You're right, and it's not fair to the administration, and I'm not making it unfair to the administration, but I think the public needs to understand what is going on, too. So I'm going to ask Ms. Wofford, why did you not agree with the budget? And then I would also like to know, Ms. Littleton, why you not agreed with the budget. So then we all can find a resolution, please. So Ms. Wofford, can you tell me why you didn't agree with the budget and what you think would make it work, please? 
I generally have an issue with taking money out of fund balance. I think there is a process that we go by to come up with um, budget numbers, whether we are conservative or not, or if that adds to the fund balance or detracts fr from it. That's a process that we've always taken, and I believe in a balanced budget. Um, that isn't new news. Um, I have said that many times. I said that when we gave bonuses. I didn't, I didn't change my opinion of that. Um, so taking money out of the fund balance is very difficult for me. Um, I have gone back and forth over whether I should abstain or not because I do think there is an issue with the notice and I don't know what the repercussions of that are, but my general issue is going into the fund balance. I, I was gonna say, I don't know, she asked me to answer a question. I didn't, these are not new things that I've said. I don't ever appreciate going into the fund balance. Ms. Marone asked me the question, I'm answering the question. I believe in a balanced budget. If we want to change the way that we predict what we're going to have, then bring a new way to do it. But if we predict a certain amount of income, I think we should live up to that. That's how I try to do it at my house. Well, I've been on the board almost six years, and I don't ever recall not adding to, we've always added to the fund balance. I don't recall a single time that we've had to take money out of the fund balance, notwithstanding the fact, like last year, on paper there was a $7 million shortfall, but it did not come into fruition. This year is a $2.4 million out of a $103 million fund balance. I don't understand the consternation and the issues resolving around, because we want to support academics, we want to support our schools and our teachers, but we're not willing to come off another four or $500,000 to make sure that the superintendent and his staff are properly staffed to do the job that the schools and the children and the parents need and, and hired us to do this job. They hired us by voting for us. And the people who vote against this may suffer repercussions. That's all I need to say about it. So, Ms. Littleton, can you tell me why you voted against the budget? I feel that the budget is extreme. I think that we're looking at things that have recently come up, which is the competition between us and the other districts around us, and how much money they are spending to take all of our talented teachers away. The number of teachers that have resigned or want to resign because they're basically bribing them to come. And they're betting on Berkeley County not supporting that and not stepping up to the plate. I have spoken to both Mr. Jackson and to Ms. Smith about the budget. And I just think that we're not at a point where we can say, oh yeah, this is the budget that we want. We've had like three different discussions of how it should be changed and we're saying we're not gonna change it. Makes no sense to me at all. So with that being said, is it fair to say that we all can agree that we need these positions and that we also need our teachers and our support staff to get raises? So is there a way to get a fair compromise to say that we can have this budget and not necessarily go to a 5% raise, but maybe we can do like a 3.5% raise? Is that something, or a 4% raise? You just voted against the 3% raise. I voted what against the 3% raise. I'm, I'm just saying because I don't agree with the 3% raise. Don't shake your head. You asked me what I voted yeah, for, I, and I said I, I, I don't agree with it. I am absolutely perplexed you can. at your you comments. Can. It just makes no sense. You can make no sense, but guess what? The public understands where everybody stands now. What are you saying is that you... That is my point. You would rather see more, more uh, income go to the teachers. I want Instead of being a 3%, you, you would prefer I agree 4%. what Michael says. I agree what Michael says, that our teachers and our staff need more, our staff and our teachers need more, okay. more income. We need to be more competitive. We need that. But I'm also saying that seeing all of those positions, it, it doesn't, perception's reality, it doesn't look right. It doesn't look right, and I understand they need it, but other positions and other departments are saying, we need the help too. And I'm sorry, I'm getting, I get messages, I'm getting, do, does anyone else hear that too, or am I the only one that hears that? 
I'm not even going to mention how many open positions we have in the district because I don't feel so appropriate for me to put that number out on the street. But my gosh, the number we got here recently was astronomical. I mean, let's, let's get real. We're talking about who needs help. Well, we need positions at the schools and, and the people at the schools need help. I mean, we all need help. I get that. But again, it's, this is a philosophy difference is what this is. This is a personal belief system. This isn't, oh, you're against the children. Oh, you're against the administration. Oh, you're against these people. Oh, you're evil if you don't agree with me and vote like I said. No, this is people, this is democracy, people. You have your one single vote, and the one single vote of each board member has been cast. Okay? So what we're said is, we don't agree with this budget, so get us another budget so we can come to a consensus. This is how democracy has always worked. It's not always been, well, I hired someone, and since I hired them, I'm just going to do a veto rubber stamp. No, we're not doing a veto rubber stamp. We're trying to do what's right. So me and Mus Marone, what we're saying is, we're not saying we're not for the teachers, for the staff. We're saying, no, we want more money for them. And so tonight is not the night that we figure that out. We're not going to sit up here the next, we can sit up here another five hours. We're not going to come to an agreement. But another night, we can come to an agreement. But the way we come to that agreement is five board members need to vote yes. Put another motion. All right. Had a motion? Anybody? Is there another motion? I'm not saying anything for the rest of the night. Okay. <laughs> There can be. The continue, um, does somebody actually, want to make the Ms. continuing Moran resolution the that voted it no against it originally? Right. So you can do that. You can do another proposal. There are a number of options here. So somebody can but you have to do something. Right. So can I? Yeah. 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 So, Miss, and I'm, please excuse me for addressing you directly. You made the remark about um, wanting needing additional support at the schools and, and scratching the two executive director positions. Now, the original request from my office were, were it was five positions, decrease that by one and, and that's what you all see tonight. During the course of, of this discussion, we eliminated another. So in theory, uh, that's the balance or that's, that's funding from two of those salary positions to include benefits that could go towards supporting, I'm, I'm not quite sure what level of support or what type of support, but could go towards supporting the school levels that still would provide uh, that additional assistance for the schools uh, administratively uh, for when they call or when parents call, et cetera, and that still would provide for an operations officer. Again, I am willing to do without my direct support so that folks at the school level and the folks that are directly responsible for responding to the concerns of parents and the concerns of the schools so that they can have that support. So we, we, there is an opportunity to utilize those funds in a different capacity as the uh, tuition reimbursement and opportunities for professional development, that plan has not been completely fleshed out. But that's been a motion and, and second and defeated already. No. To May I say something? Yes. Um, I have on, if this can be on the table, I do have on good authority that the three positions for A and I can be a part of the motion to be removed from the budget if that is something that the board would like to consider. What position was that? That is the um, K-5 ELA coordinator, the receptionist, and the director of instruction. Can be struck if that is the direction the board would like to take. And administration can support that as well. So I'd like to make a motion. Oh, let's, let's make okay. sure that we do some other, you know, talk about it before you make well, well, I guess you make it. I was going to say, you kind of got to have a motion. No, because I'm listening to what Mrs. Smith is saying. You're saying 
The second to be strike. What about the executive director of elementary and executive director of secondary and chief, uh, chief of staff? So uh, Mr. Jackson's already said that he's willing to do without it. Okay, and without the, chief of staff. without the chief of staff, but we're saying the executive director of elementary and executive director of secondary, are we with having those two positions or are we saying that we don't want those positions to be a part of the budget? I'm talking to my board members. Hello? Yes, yes, we want those. No, well, no, I'm saying we do, I know you do, I understand, I'm saying, but if we... I'm work, just making it clear. I, that's what I want. But I'm saying yes, if we were members. to get rid of those, exactly she just made a suggestion, I'm just trying to figure out. Okay. If, Michael, is, is that fine with you? You don't want any of those positions up there, right? You against all of that. The well, I think me and Ms. Marone have been pretty clear, and we've talked a lot about uh, where our stance are, is as far as her and I, we're on the same mindset as far as that uh, with this pandemic and how this district's been hurt, okay. that we're not saying uh, district staff isn't needed, but what we're saying is our focus and our priority for this year's budget is at the schools and is at the local staff and even more so is at a higher raise than three percent because if you go to the grocery store and you see what the cost of anything is or you go to the pump and you see how much gas costs or if you go rent a house anything you do the cost of living is so high so what I'm saying is a 3% for our employees is not enough. Okay. And that's what I heard from seven people. 100% okay. of people. Came, I got off work early to come to the budget meeting today. I was here at the budget meeting at 4.30. Okay. I think there was, we just barely had a majority to have a quorum. And so we listened to seven people come up here and all seven of them were saying, you got to pass the budget, got to pass the budget because we have to have 3%. And what I'm saying is Berkeley County government did a 5% raise that goes in effect in two weeks. They didn't go into the fund balance, they didn't raise taxes, but they gave their employees 5%. How many employees so what I'm do Berkeley is County have? That's where have. my priority is at. How many uh, employees do Berkeley County have? Much less than the school district. The okay. budget is much smaller. <laughs> our, our, our budget is, like I said, it's 372 million. Same budget out. But let's, let's you made mention, so you, you want to split the difference. In other words, if we say we're going to give everybody a 4% pay increase and eliminating those positions that the superintendent has recommended, then you can support something like that. For this that. year. But yeah, we're going to have to make some other cuts to get to that 4 or $5 million, right? He's saying that's not So, but I'm just one. I mean, again, there's there's nine of us. So you know, just because that's my feeling doesn't mean that it's the eight other you. I just, I just, I, I mean, I mean, you you made mention of what you were thinking about, and I just, you know, present the question it. to you, and the same to you. Are you, are you saying if we're we get clear rid of with what we're thinking? I mean, maybe no. I just everyone I just, else is clear that three percent is enough for some of y'all. Is what what y'all are saying? It's not what we're saying. That's I. If I could give these employees 5%, that'd be beautiful. But just taking away, this doesn't account for the extra 2%. And I don't really know where else we could take it from. We, we, we had a custodian. We've had two custodians now come and talk to us about, you know, their salaries and their starting wages. Their starting wages, not salaries. But, and, I mean, I don't know where we could take it from. So um, I, I would like to make a motion. Mr. Chairman, if I may. Yes, ma'am. Okay. I make a motion. I make a motion to do a 4% raise across the board, take away the chief of staff, take away the academics and innovations. Um, that's my motion. 4% raise, take away chief of staff, take away the academics and innovation positions, leave the budget, the rest of the budget as is. Second. So a 
your motion, Ms. Tanner, is a 4% across the board raise with a reduction of, of Mr. Jackson's request of a chief of staff and an associate or a no, and the academics and innovation positions that are budget neutral. Uh, so he's already taken away the uh, deputy superintendent. No, I know. I'm yeah, saying 4% raise. Plus the, take away chief the, second, the second line. Yes, sir. Item. Second line. Yes, sir. We have a motion and a second. Motion by Ms. Tanner, second by the board chair, Ms. Wofford. I was just trying to figure out where we are. So Mr. Jackson withdrew, withdrew the request. Are we, we're working from this budget or he has also withdrawn. So it's 4% chief of staff and those three positions. But what he said earlier about giving up this position or the other, that is just input. That was the chief of staff one. That was the chief of yes, staff. Ma okay. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. All right, I get it now. I'm sorry, I had to. No, it's okay. Out. I was yes, no, I was following you. There were initially five, and he he withdrew the the deputy superintendent. That's not up there. Okay. And then he uh, reluctantly said it'd be okay due to chief, but he's he's adamant about the two executive director positions, the elementary and and uh, secondary. Okay. So the. The motion, the motion by Ms. Tanner, seconded by the board chair, is a 4% across the board raise and a reduction of the chief of staff, as well as the second line item up there, the K-5 ELA coordinator, receptionist, director of instruction, et cetera. Any discussion? So the question is, I would have to Ashley is how Short are we as far as needing the money to cover the four percent? So that would be a fund balance designation of four million five hundred thirty-three thousand three sixteen instead of the two point four, which was here earlier. And, and how much money were we awarded to the fund balance this past year from? We haven't completed our audit for this not, year. I mean, so last year, I'm talking about last year, not this year. I can't remember the exact amount, but it did increase um, to 103 million. Yes, sir. I know, but where, where were we before it increased is what I'm saying. I want to say we increased by about 4 million last year, and, um, and that's attributed to um, vacancy, unfilled vacancies, which we have every year, and in addition to that, when we allocate to schools and departments, um, each school and department never spends their complete and total allocation to zero every year, so that, that money that's left on the table, that unspent money, always rolls into fund balance. Okay. So, Ms. Smith, your, your projected uh, conservative amount of growth is 7% for this coming year, fiscal year, is that correct? Yes, sir, it's not as conservative as I've been in the past, but it is, um, it's consistent based on um, historical growth in the district. And if I may, I wanna remind our, everyone on the board and the public that last year when we did this, we, we were saying we were gonna be seven million in the fund balance, am I correct? Correct me on how so my wording is. So at the beginning, is. at the beginning of this year, we, and then we received additional funds, and so we did the budget amendment recently to and we have a that. balanced budget this year. Yes, so we didn't touch it. So we we do not project now to go into fund balance at the end of this current fiscal year. That is correct. Which is two days away. Which is two days away. I will not have the exact numbers. Okay. It takes about until November to right, get those right. numbers, but um, I'll have a, an estimate probably okay. by the end of July. So 4.6 is is better than seven, is what I'm saying. That's all I'm, I want everyone to understand that. I just, I, I feel very confident that this is doable for the good of everyone in Berkeley County. So, okay. Is everybody aware of the motion again? 4% across the board with both administrative supervisors and the operations officer still intact. The chief of staff being re uh, eliminated as well as that second line item being eliminated 
and it looks like the fund balance would be instead of 2.4 it would be about 4.5 yes, million dollars 4.5 million yes, on sir. paper yes sir because you don't know what it is until you get the revenue and all of these other funds in at the end of the year to find out if you're actually going to have to take money out or not. Is that, that is right? the estimated projection to fund balance, yes, okay. sir. Is there any other discussion? I think it's a fair compromise. Pardon me? I said I think that's a fair compromise. And, and we do have the right in the future when we find out what the final answer is to change it. It's not... Absolutely. Absolutely. We, we have increased teacher salaries mid-year. Yes. Yeah. Any other discussion? We'll call for the question. All in favor of the motion, that's by Ms. Tanner, seconded by the board chair. Uh, please respond by saying aye. 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 All opposed, nay. 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 Those that voted in the affirmative, please raise your hand. In the negative, raise your hand. Motion carries 5-4. Can I say I think that was a healthy process, as painful as it was, and Superintendent Jackson, thank you for your hard work and willing to sacrifice some positions. And thank you, Ms. Smith, for doing fast on the quick math Budget number. and for folks willing to compromise and expressing their opinions and holding to them. I think this was ultimately a good result for everybody. Teachers went from, what, 3% to 4%. So they ought to be happy. Thank you for that comment, Ms. McQuillan. Yep. The next item is uh, item number, thank you, uh, Ms. Smith, so you had to stand Thank on your you. feet so long. Okay. Next item is uh, item number 13, superintendent's report. Mr. Jackson. Forgot where we were. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, They've already given you a superintendent report. <laughs> <laughs> so what I will do, uh, we, we have some very uh, special guests with us here tonight. In the past few meetings, we've highlighted some of our special programs that we have that support our students, that support our families, and support our communities. And so tonight, we're going to continue in that same spirit. And so at this point, I would like to invite Dr. Glenda Levine uh, to the podium uh, for the introduction of our special guest and this next presentation. Good evening, Board Chair Barrow, Superintendent Jackson, members of the board, fellow cabinet members, and members of the audience. Superintendent Jackson, thank you for yielding a portion of your time tonight for a presentation from the Office of Student and Family Support, formerly called at -risk Services, which is a division of the Office of Diversity. And at this time, I would ask for someone I'm about to talk about just a little bit to come up, um, just fabulous to work with. The division is led by a phenomenal leader who constantly asks the question, what else can we do to support students and families in our district? That leader is our director, Ms. Elaine Swain. Within the division, Ms. Swain leads a group of bright, talented, hardworking professionals, our social workers. She will be sharing information with you tonight regarding the services our social workers provide. And yes, the totals you will see are the actual numbers for each of the services listed. Our social workers have the knowledge, experience, certifications, and most important, the heart needed to provide support to all of our students, whereas some of our partners' strengths lie in supporting smaller groups of students in our population. Ms. Wayne will be giving you a brief overview of the work the team does tonight and the support programs. And at the end of the presentation, she will recognize our awesome team members. Without further ado, Elaine Swain will present fostering a culture of care and support for students and families. Yeah. 
a little short. So good evening, Superintendent Jackson, Board Chair Barrow, Board members and Cabinet members. I'm excited to share the work we do with the Office of Student and Family Support with the students and families in schools within our district. So, so I'm going to start by saying, um, so this is something that I do in training. So if you can hear me, take a deep breath. In through the nose, out through the mouth. That's more for me, honestly, <laughs> than for you. <laughs> so the Office of Student and Family Support facilitates services focused on a culture of care and support. I'll cover each of these programs in this presentation. So the picture up there, if uh, my, our team is back there still, this is our school social work team. And these are some stakeholder feedback that we've gotten uh, actually this year particularly. And I've been a licensed social worker for 25 years. 11 years ago, I was hired as a school social worker for Berkeley County School District. I was one of four social workers here, one of four. So over, over the last 11 years, we've grown from four to 14. That is something to, for us to be very proud of. We are completely humbled by the stakeholder feedback you see up there. We work tirelessly every day to try to serve the students and families' needs. And I just want to, you know, really, we, we appreciate you because sitting through this board budget process, I know that you have helped us build our team from 4 to 14. So I'm so appreciative of that. So our team members look like this. There are 14 of us. 11 of them are licensed social workers, three of them are non-licensed. Licensed social workers means that we provide mental health support to the students and families and the, and the school employees of this district. Each social worker serves up to six schools. That's an average caseload of one social worker to 3,000 students. Our licensed social workers, like I said, lead the mental health support services, and the non-licensed master social workers lead the attendance and truancy initiatives. The social workers are assigned to schools basically on the feeder patterns. So for example, if a social worker is assigned to Goose Creek High School, they serve Mount Holly Elementary, Goose Creek Elementary, and Sedgefield Middle. So this information right here is a comparison of the school social work team interventions in the last two years. So I want to highlight the fact that all of the social workers served every student in this district. We believe that all 37,000 students, families, staff members, the 5,000 or so staff members that we, we serve, all, all of our people that are in our county, we are here to serve them. So in comparison for the student interventions, I just want to kind of want to highlight that. For 2021, you'll see an increase. So in 2020-21, we served direct services to students, 7,635 incidents or services. The this past year, we increased those services to 11,113. So we saw that increase, of course, because of the need and because we expanded our team. Another area I'd like to highlight is the attendance in AIP interventions. That went from two years ago, 5,823 uh, services, and then this year we went to 15,778. So that one, we have three non-licensed social workers that are providing direct services for attendance for our, for our schools that have the most need. Um, and one thing also I'd like to pinpoint about this, uh, this data is the fact that the home visits. If you see that the home visits two years ago were 2,872. That was with nine social workers. So this year we may have decreased the home visits and that's truly because we're in the schools. We're providing direct services, individual counseling, small group counseling, and restorative practices. So another area that we provide services in is the McKinney-Vento program. The McKinney-Vento program is a federal legislation passed in 1987. It focuses on students who are lacking a fixed, regular, and adequate living situation in our county. We emphasize school stability, and we are really focused on removing the barriers to their academic success. 
So our, the way we support is we collaborate, the Office of Student and Family Support collaborates within our district with child nutrition and school, um, child nutrition and transportation. Uh, we served 142 students this year with School of Origin Transportation. That means that we try, we try our best to provide educational stability. If a homeless student is displaced from the, Goose Creek air, from the Goose Creek area and was attending Goose Creek High and moved to a family member in Monk's Corner, we ensure that we provide transportation from Monk's Corner to the Goose Creek to make sure that they stay stable in their education environment. Now we also have multiple partnerships with community agencies and stakeholders to ensure that the needs of the students are met. And I have to also give a shout out not only to child nutrition and transportation, but also to the school counselors who are the, uh, the school-based McKinney-Vento liaisons. They identify the students at the school level. Also want to highlight the fact that the competitive subgrant that we get from South Carolina Department of Ed and the American Rescue Plan, I'm proud to say, and I kind of brag about myself a little bit, but the uh, State Department awards 20 of these competitive subgrants, and we have received this subgrant consistently over the last 11 years that I've been here, even before that. So we, you know, that's a a really great pr program. We provide 100. We offer 100% of our homeless students tangible supports, clothing, school supplies. Some of you have visited our closet at the at the district office right beside here. So you know we we constantly meet the needs of our students. And then we've also hired a McKinney Vento Systems Navigator that's going to start this August to really work with the 365 students that we usually, on average, identify. So where are these homeless students sleeping in Berkeley County? The majority of our students are sleeping doubled up. We don't have an emergency shelter like Charleston does. So what we, when we identify these students as per the McKinney-Vento law, they live doubled up in sometimes crowded situations you know, with family members and friends. And you know, sometimes the social workers are visiting homeless students that are living in a one-bedroom apartment and there's three families in there. So just so that you know that that's kind of the makeup of the students that we serve when it comes to homelessness. Another, another area I want to pinpoint is the fact that the substandard unsheltered families are the ones that are, you know, we've got a couple students that were living in tents, basically in our wooded area, campers. So just so that you know, we, we make every effort to meet the needs of our students and families through our social work team and our school partnerships. This is a happy slide. So Berkeley Wonderland is something that we started in 2016. Um, as you can see, the, we serve students that are homeless and at risk, and since 2016, we've grown over the years. This is actually where central services staff, um, board members, as well as community members partner together with our district to provide wish list, you know, to serve the wish list of these young people um, and families that are in need during the holidays and really lift their spirits up. So that picture right there are two social workers that partnered with the adult education um, department to gather those gifts and they, they shortly after, afterwards delivered those gifts to the family because the social workers deliver every single one of those gifts to the families that we serve in Berkeley Wonderland. Another area that we provide support in is foster care. We maintain the, uh, the stipulations of the Every Student Succeeds Act, and we do completely best interest decision making. Foster care students in our district increased over the last two years from 197 students in foster care two years ago, and then increased this past year up to 280 students. We provide school of origin transportation. So similar to what I was talking about when it comes to homelessness, it's the similar situation. If a foster care student or a student that is attending Goose Creek High, or let me pick another school, um, Berkeley Middle. So if a student's attending Berkeley Middle, gets removed from their home and placed in foster care, and placed in a foster home in the, that's zoned for Sedgefield Middle, then we provide transportation to ensure that that student stays at Berkeley Middle School. That is a collaboration between DSS and the school district, and we constantly communicate about the services we provide to foster care students. So, 
Restorative practices. Now, I, I'm just going to share something just a little bit about myself. I've been doing restorative practices um, for a very long time. If to give you some context, I started doing restorative practices in a school that was primarily for uh, students that were coming from Rikers Island and prisons from New York State. And so when I started that, my children were, uh, I think Patrick was seven, and my daughter was like four. My children are now 21 and 16. So I learned about this method um, through our work in the school system, but also I practiced it in my house. So similar to what you heard from uh, cabinet member Ms. Taylor, uh, Mr. Thurman, and Ms. Butolsky last week, or two weeks ago at your last board meeting, this is something that I truly believe in. And I really, truly, really, just like, no disrespect, but just like you guys sat here to work through issues, that's what what restorative practices is. It's being able to have everybody's voice heard, especially a student and family, a teacher who's affected by the student's behavior. Everybody's voice is heard, and the point is, is to rebuild relationships. So the three areas that we provide restorative practices support in is staff training and school-wide implementation, student reentry plan, and alternative step support to expulsion. I'm going to go into each one of those in a second. So I'm not going to go into this uh, really deep because you, two weeks ago, um, they presented on this, but except to put, pinpoint the fact that building win-win relationships. We need to build win-win relationships with our students and families, our stakeholders, everybody involved, so that everybody is on the same page for academic success for our young people. These pictures right here are us providing training. The top picture it was taken last week at Berkeley High School where I trained a good number, about 40 or 50 Berkeley High School faculty and administration on restorative practices. The picture below that is last August when we trained all of the school resource officers in restorative practices. And then if you see right there on the slide, we have also, we started this program, actually I've got to give a shout out to Ms. Day, Ms. Day at Sangaree Middle, she was the one that we partnered together to really bring this mindset to the district, to really talk about our, how are we serving our students, how are we holding them accountable, but also building the relationship. So Sedgefield Middle has also been trained, Cane Bay Middle, Philip Simmons Middle, Sangaree Elementary. All of these schools have been trained. We've also done presentations and some training with, at summer leadership, at principals meetings um, throughout the district. So we have done a lot to work on it, but we have so much more to do. And then also just wanted to highlight that you also have, we also have uh, 14, 15 certified restorative practices trainers, including me. So we are here to provide the support that we need to make this happen. This program right here, shout out again to the social work team. Last summer, we started this program again in the spirit of restorative practices to serve expelled and Berkeley alternative school students and really focus on helping the students to identify what they've done, how it impacted the community, themselves, their families, all of that spirit of conversation, and then really talking about creating a plan when they return back to school so that they don't do the same mistake. So those are our goals for this um, expelled and Berkeley alternative school students because we do believe that that's a really good support and they need to learn and process what they've done. So this A-STEP program is something that I'm also very proud to share with you guys today. This pilot, sorry, this started as a pilot in 2019. This, these experiences that you see up there are from students and parents who experienced A-STEP. So really positive feedback. It's the alternative support to expulsion. So a step in the right direction. So this basically, is offered to students who are a first time offender, for lack of a better word, but a first time offender in the sense they have a history of minimal incidents on their discipline record or zero incidents. These are, these are the students that make a choice and then because of our matrix get recommended for expulsion. 
and at the same time, they have, they are an academic, their academic performance is in good standing. So we focus on these students and we provide two key program components. One, the restorative counseling that's provided by a team of social workers. We sit every week for 45 school days working with these students and the parents. So it's a parent and child initiative where we make sure that not only the student is held accountable, but the parent provides the needed support and also processes the reasons for the choice that they made that led to the recommendation for expulsion. And then there's also an academic expectation component where the school is responsible for basically setting up an academic program for them through a virtual setting. So our job as social workers in schools are to address the issue that came about so that the student was refer that led to the student's referral for expulsion, but it's also really to rebuild the relationships, help the student to take accountability and raise their awareness and empathy of what they've done. So since 2019, 36 students have been served, two elementary, 33 middle, one high, 32 students successfully completed the program with no further incidents, meaning that those 32 students were not expelled, they returned back to school, and many of them, I've checked their records, have not had any incidents since we served them. Four of those students did not complete the program and were recommended for expulsion. Basically, that was self-determination on their part. They decided that they did not want to go through all the, the contract, the expectations of the ASTEP program, or they also had non-compliance with academic responsibilities. The last, uh, the last uh, area of our programs that I'd like to share with you is attendance. So if you look up at the tops, the uh, research says that students are more likely to succeed when they feel connected to school. So this is what our schools do when it comes to the school attendance team. The school social workers, as well as all the, the faculty listed there, and as well as the student and parent, all work together to address attendance issues. We do a lot of uh, work with, this, with the families on improving attendance. And what we learned over the last two years was that we needed to do something more. So we created this truancy accountability collaboration, which I just want to show you this book right here. Berkeley County School District. I was actually sitting by my pool last summer and reading this book. Yes, I'm a nerd, but you know, reading this book on truancy prevention and intervention. And if you turn to page 95, Berkeley County School District is cited as a best practice in addressing attendance and intervention in 2010 and years before. So when I read this, I was like, I remember speaking to not only Mr. Jackson, but Dr. Levine too, about the fact that we're in a book on School Social Work Association. This is huge. How come I didn't know this? So then I learned from that, that information was we've got to do something different. Let's go back to that. So that summer, when I came back to work, um, I met with community members from the agencies that are listed below, and we partnered with them. And we decided that we are going to have a collaboration. So before this, before that summer, we would just send students directly to DJJ for truancy and DSS for educational neglect. That was our process. I mean, I know because I read every packet before I turned them over to the agencies, but now, we receive the packets at the district, and we review the packets, and the three social workers that are assigned to this task hold hearings in this room, and also at the HR conference room, and speak with the students and families alongside with the community members. And we all talk about what are the underlying reasons for your non-attendance. How can we help? How can we access resources from Berkeley County government? How can we have DJJ speak to the students and parents and really talk about what's gonna happen next? So that everybody understands if you continue to miss school, this was, is going to happen. So after 243 students, an increase um, was referred to TAC. Uh, 198 TAC hearings were held, 70 students 
attended these hearings, and 36% of those 70 students improved their attendance after they attended the hearing. So we see that as a win-win. And we also see the fact that we've built relationships with these, these students. And we can say to, the, to not only the students and parents, but we can also say to our stakeholders that we're here to listen. We're here to hear your side of the story, to why, and we're here to connect you to resources so that you can be successful. Ah. Okay, so the last slide. I just wanted to say first that um, let me acknowledge the social work team that's there in the back. And I want to say that, you know, there's an often thing, if you can just stand. Please stand. There, <laughs> so we all know there's no I in team. I can't do any of this work without the team that I am on. I see myself, I'm a social worker, like I said, and I cannot do anything without them. We work hard every day to, to serve the students and families. And I also want to acknowledge this quote, because I want to acknowledge everybody in this room, especially the board, superintendent, cabinet members, all of us together. We make a difference, and we try every day. So I appreciate the time that you guys spend, even at like 9.30 at night. So like I said, I appreciate all the time that you spend and we're here together making a difference. So thank you. Thank you. Board members have any questions? I wanna, can I just for a moment, um, I'm also a social worker, so um, I want to thank you for clarifying the involvement of the parents. That was a question brought up earlier tonight, and um, when they presented two weeks ago, they made a point that the parents are involved, because without the parents, you're not going to get anything accomplished. So, um, but thank you for what you're doing in the schools, and thank you to the team. Well done. Thank you, Dr. Levine. Thank you, Ms. Swain. This is really a long overdue presentation. We've been talking about this for quite some time, haven't we, Ms. Swain? Um, and this is, I love everybody, but this is probably one of my favorite groups that we have in the district, having the opportunity to personally uh, work with the social workers. And we've grown from a department of what, it was six or seven, into where we are now, um, just the work that they do on a day-to-day -day basis, serving our students serving our families and serving our communities. Um, I thought that everyone in Berkeley County and everyone in the world really needs to know the job that they do, um, the, just the, the selflessness, and sometimes they don't get a lot of thank yous. Um, but I think everyone needed to, needs to understand the work that's being performed and what they do uh, day in and day out. Uh, there's a lot of misunderstandings, and so I'm glad that you were able to uh, have this presentation and kind of clarify uh, what our social workers actually do every day. Thank you. Awesome. And, and just really quick, Mr. Barrow, um, we know education is the, the great equalizer. So last week, we had an opportunity to celebrate 65 graduates from our adult education program. So we're, we're still... Our adult education program is geared towards serving Berkeley County residents 17 and older, and we had some, some older uh, graduates last week, and that was impressive to see that level of uh, dedication and perseverance that they have to their education. Um, our adult education offers um, uh, English as a second language, um, high school diploma programs, and also the high school equivalency diploma, also known as the GED. Um, they're, they're just doing phenomenal work, and you know, that 65, they have ambitions of eclipsing uh, the three-figure mark here soon, and so they're aiming for 100 graduates, and so hopefully they can hit that mark here soon, and we'll, we'll be coming back to celebrate. And so, uh, Mr. Chair, that concludes my report for this evening. Thank you, Mr. Jackson. Uh, just a few uh, upcoming dates, events, and reminders. Uh, human Resources, the hiring party on the lawn this Thursday from 4 to 6, if you're available, uh, come take, be a part of that. Uh, if you, board members, if you have not completed or signed your Head Start governance training, 
please sign your signature with Lacey before leaving tonight. Also, uh, the board retreat slash information session at 1 p is Saturday, July 30th from 9 to 4. Please make sure that you, uh, if you can attend, make sure that you can and let me know. And there's one other item, um, the board meeting dates. Uh, if no one objects, we will eliminate the July 12th board meeting. Uh, we will not have the July 12th board meeting, uh, mainly because there's not a whole lot of business and we will be doing the July, I guess, 26th board meeting and also the retreat on the 30th. If there's any questions or comments about that, we will put that on the website to make sure that it's, that it's well known and well received. With that, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. second. We have a motion, Ms. McQuillan, second, Ms. Ramsey. All in favor of the adjournment? Aye. Aye. We are adjourned.